Okay, here we are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stream. I usually do a sound check before stream. I forgot. <laughs> I want to thank Gadget Angel for becoming a member while the while the stream was active but not live. Um, good morning. Uh, hi, Tracy Moon. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Delmar. Hi, Mr. Clown. Hey, Joker Nut. <laughs> Sorry about that. And Charlie's going straight for the Thunderbolt cable. <laughs> hi, Steve. Hi, Vince Wall. Hi, Bill. Hi, Tiny Trucking. Maker Source. So, exciting news. Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2. Release Candidate 1. What that basically means, it's a released. Um, but just in case something we miss. There's a couple of issues out there um, that are. So, it's, it's the final version. There are a couple of things, just so it's tagged correctly on GitHub, it's marked as a release candidate right now. So it should get marked, tagged as a full release very shortly once we find anything we might have missed. You know, every, uh, several eyes get on this. There's always something that gets missed. So, so we are going to start this stream today building Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2. That setup will be used on the Ender 3 Pro to switch wire conversion. So right after that build, the that part of the build we're going to move on into continuing so uh, kind of combining things into the stream today based on my i don't want to wait on either of these i don't want to wait for stealth burn i don't want to wait for ender um content so i'll just do them both so <laughs> mr clown my phone is out of my pocket that was the first thing i did <laughs> hi bartastic joker nut thanks for gifting the memberships Steve, you just used the statistical forget that we all have per stream. It means you're going to remember everything moving forward. That's absolutely right. <laughs> I'm doing well, Dark Nature. Now, how are you? Oh, what do we have here? Tohos, member for three months. Time flies. Building the RCF now to a Vorn 2.4. Have fun with it. Let me know how it goes. Have you coated the Thunderbolt cable and catnip? No, he just likes to rub on stuff that, um, like edges of things. Voron toast for breakfast. Voron toast tastes terrible. Might be able to find a setting that doesn't, but it tastes terrible. I wonder if the stealth burner carriage for switch wire can one to one be used on the ender to switch wire conversion. I believe so, DJ Natty, and that's what we're going to be doing today. It, it should be a one to one. I, I don't see any reason why not, so I'm expecting it to be. Oh, let me, Charlie made me scroll. Derek, thanks for gifting the memberships. Morning, Poity. Thanks again for your help on the thing the other day. Reprinting my stealth burner for my current beta five. That's probably a good idea. Beta five is a bit, a bit old. The changes from um, the last beta to release are minor. A couple of cosmetic, a couple of very small tweaks. Need to engrave your pre-stream flight checklist. There we go. That's a good idea. So we played with a uh, diode laser engraver on um, on the member stream yesterday, and that'll become public um, sometime before the next stream. So the just an example of something I we engraved. So a, a formula that I always get mixed up and forget. So I'm going to mount this somewhere. I'm going to cut it a little closer and mount this somewhere so I won't forget. Stuff like that. Um, I did try to eat the toast. <laughs> it wasn't a good idea. Different piece of toast. I, that was the second, that was the second attempt. Dark dog, five euros. Thank you. Hey, Christian from po Copenhagen. Uh, Delmar, what is included in the LDL store stealth burner upgrade kit? Doesn't include the stepper for CW2. Not yet. Um, I imagine that it will at some point, but I don't have any real information on that. But the, the kits are, are not coming with the, the 36 millimeter um, stepper motor. Notifications didn't work. I know YouTube is terrible at that. I don't know what to do about it. Um, I'm going to try to put a message up um, the day before, see if that helps, but sorry. 
Time to heat up the printer. Just printed self burning Galileo yesterday. Nice. Delmar, I will. <clears throat> I'll get to that um, when we get to that part of the of the stream. I, I absolutely will show that. So. <laughs> Carl's, of course, here's Charlie. We are saying hello. Yeah, I'm surprised he hasn't decided to knock every bit of Stealth Burner off of here for me. Notifications just showed up. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what to do. I, I wish YouTube would fix it. So. Um, I'm curious if it's if the some of the major problems are those that are watching on like a, a non computer or mobile device like a TV or something, if that's uh, a big part of the problem. Charlie is wanting to go everywhere. <laughs> uh, do all Ender have the same frame? No. Um, there are differences. I couldn't speak exactly to them. I know on the original Ender 3 here, the regular Ender 3 has a 2040 in the center instead of a 2020 or a 2040 instead of the 4040. So it makes for quite a difference, but I'm sure you can find a mod out there. Hi, David English. Hello. Hey, Thomas. Hi, the Viper Man. So I'm hoping to get Charlie's nervous energy out early so we can get to this. That's why he's up here. That's why I try to bring him up here. I've started bringing him up here right away. Give him the pets. Give him all the pets. Oh, some power save mode. Stop pulling notifications. Yeah. Ender 3 has 2040 for Y, Ender 3 Pro has 4040 for Y, Ender 3 V2 has 4040, but slightly shorter. So there is, in, in this mod, there is a spacer for the Ender, Ender 3 V2 I saw. So that's, um, it goes between the Y stepper mount and that, and that 4040. And I'm sure that's exactly to take care of that. Okay, Charlie, you're going to go down. I'm sure you're going to jump back up here, but we got to get started. So, Stealth Burn, release. It looks really good. Check that out. A picture by Wiley. Does a really good job with these pictures. Um, and these colors. That, I believe, the um, that exact uh, Stealth Burner is printed in Sparta, Cherry Red Sparkle, and Prusament Galaxy Black. So... Ender 3 S1 and S1 Pro have no normal V-slot extrusions. Oh, okay. The S1 is very different then. The, it's the it's the solid extrusions. Got it. So this is the here. Let's let's do this. Let's paste this here, and let's pin that. So this is what we're working on right now. So, did the right thing pin? I hope so. Yep. Do you happen to know if the diffuser changed between, from beta 7 to release? I do not believe so. And we are going to be using that diffuser. So, we'll find out. <laughs> hey, Sanity. Um, the picture, this is ABS. The picture on the screen is all ABS. Well... The, the Prusamen Galaxy Black is ASA. Kenneth, since you have more communication with LDO Jason, will the LDO motor kit be upgraded from the pancake to the RAM pancake? I don't know yet. I haven't heard. So um, feel free to ask on the LDO channel, either their Discord or the LDO channel in the Voron Discord. I'm sure you'll get an answer. Doing this mod and forgot the whole print head group until you brought this up. <laughs> so we're going on a wild ride today and finding stuff out. Of course. That's usual. Hey, Jaeger. Hi, Melting SP. So, Stealth Burner gives its own GitHub repo. All the CAD. All the STLs. And a manual. So I have already kind of gone through the manual because I was looking for 
Um, where do we got? Oh, home. There we go. Let's go to the top of the manual. I pre-cut some wires and I wanted to confirm what lengths we were suggesting. So that's why I was in there. I suggest preheating one of the Tridents to be safe. <laughs> I, I'll use the V0. Then it'll be a super quick print. Hey, Squirrel Brain. So the manual. Warren Stealth Burner. All the stuff. We have a table of contents, printing part, print, print guide, settings guide. I scrambled for the last 15 minutes, remembering, oh yeah, I need Bontech gears for this build. Oh yeah, I need a thumb screw. Oh yeah, I need bearings. Oh yeah, I need LEDs. <laughs> I had all the parts printed, I hope, but. <laughs> Um, so there are a couple of new, um, naming conventions for Stealth Burner, and those are in particular the opaque parts and the clear transparent, and that has to do with the diffuser for the LED on the Stealth Burner front. So you want to print the clear transparent part, preferably in a clear PET G, is probably the best material for that. You can resin print it, uh, resin print would probably work really well too. You just need something that's going to diffuse that light. And then the opaque part, it's just a dark part. I usually just use black. It's not seen. All it does is control some of the light bleed. So you don't just end up getting a glowing front part of your um, for stealth burner. This, this part here, depending on the, on the filament, the whole area will glow. And it'll glow less with this okay, opaque piece in there. So... Can you do clear ABS? Um, you can, clear ABS is a different formulation. I don't remember exactly what they do with it, but it will eventually get brittle, start showing cracks, stress cracks. Um, I would watch it. I don't know if all clear ABS is similar, um, but the stuff we've seen some pictures of and the stuff I've, I have a little bit that I've printed with, I have, a, I have some Hatchbox version. Um, it's not great stuff and I've, think, don't quote me, someone might be able to confirm, it's not as great, it's worse, um, the, the off gases and stuff are worse, but I'd like someone else to confirm that, because I think that's what I heard. Hey John, welcome. Hey, you're on time. <laughs> oh, so you want to do ABST for that insert? Oh, I would, do, that would be fine. I wouldn't have any problems with that for that little insert. Uh, so for CW2, if you just did a build with CW1, is it really that huge of an upgrade to rebuild for CW2? I think some of the, it is the next generation of extruder, right? But in, in, in addition to that, wire management is so much nicer. Everything fits, there's so much more room underneath the that integrated um, cable cover, this guy. Red mask, not good on stealth burner. Mine glows pink all the time. <laughs> okay, so that those are the highlights here. So you have a clear part and you have something. I mean, if, you're, if your stealth burner is already black or something, you're not gonna see as big of a difference in that, but it's, it's all meant to go together. So you need to print that piece. It just, depending on the color of your front, um, the, the front body, then it will depend on how important it is. Um, reporting issues. So there are a few issues that have been reported, so we'll get those fixed um, before it goes to get marked at, as the, the release. Um, any plans for a Bowden stealth burner? I don't know, I'm not sure. Fasteners used, I don't think there's anything especially different there. And the, the, the major components of Stealth Burner are the, the Clockwork 2 extruder. It's here. Stealth Burner is the main body and fan assembly. And then the tool cartridge, the Stealth Burner tool cartridge. And that'll, different parts depending on what hot end you're using. And then there is an integrated ADXL sensor mount, which is really nice. 
Hey, Sean. Yeah, and the BMG guts are the same for CW1 versus CW2. You just don't use that 17 tooth um, gear that goes on the NEMA 17. Instead, you use the 10 tooth that's integrated onto the pancake stepper. So we're gonna start with clockwork two. Now I've assembled this many, many, many times. I'm gonna go by the manual. I'm gonna try to go by the order of the manual. It may not, I've, I've assembled it without a manual up to this point. So we're gonna try to follow the manual and I've got a bunch of stuff and I'm gonna preheat my, my soldering iron and try to get a good camera angle and let's get going. So I did not do any prep on this beforehand. So sometimes in my newer, more recent streams, I insert the oh boy, I got catcher all over. Um, insert the inserts and stuff like that ahead of time. We'll be doing all of that today. The attribute I like the most stealth runners, they got rid of that of the hinge. Yeah, it makes for a more rigid assembly, for sure. Thinking about putting the Orbiter V2 on one of my V0 to compare it to the LGX Lite. We'll also go with another Revo one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to put an Orbiter V2 on my Solid Fork build. Okay, let's see. So we are going to start with the, um, looks like the main part, and we'll get some inserts into here. So let's see. Oh, that color, that, oh, sorry. And we'll see how that goes. Um, before we go there, I have not prepped these parts either. So like to make sure that mating surfaces don't have any little over extrusion marks. Now on stealth burner, be careful. There are um, raised surfaces, particularly on here. There are a couple of um, intentionally um, like sliding surfaces. So I just wanna make sure I get around those and don't sand those off. Like this, this hole here has a raised portion around it. It doesn't take much to get these, the just the little high spots off. I'm just making sure we don't hit those, the raised spot there and a raised spot there and a raised spot there. Just not much to it. Get, get some of this inside here. And I'm just gonna do that to all the pieces since I have the file out. Especially this piece, the, the guidler. And that, so, and then I'll, I'll move over to the to the tool head here. Just do some part prep before we. Before we move on. Okay. See where we're at. Have there been any significant changes between beta five and release? I have a beta five build and haven't been following the changes. I have no idea what um, what changed between beta five and I think was it beta seven that was the last one. The problem is I don't know what changed between those. Between the latest beta and this, it's very minor. Some cosmetic changes, like the uh, this ang this is an angle instead of straight. It just for aesthetics. It also um, registers to a spot on the tool head. You see here, it, it registers in there and and fits really nice. Um, there are some minor like point fractional of a millimeter changes to the uh, filament path, I think. I believe Wiley's gonna do a, a, a short change log uh, before the actual, the, before the final release, before it's marked as a release. Any chance for a list of parts that need to be reprinted when compared to the last beta? I would reprint it all. It's, uh, I mean, at the, at the very least, the, the tool head is all, all has tweaks and the front has tweaks. I would I would go with all, all of it. And it does look better with that angle. So now we are, I've done the, just a little bit of cleanup on the parts. 
So let's get to inserting some heat sets. According to the manual, we've got a couple. Couple here, here. Now it is critical on most of these heat sets to make sure that they are inserted straight. I, I think I annoyed Wiley a couple of times talking about stuff and really the problem was that I didn't put the heat sets in as straight as they could be. It's really easy to, to miss that. Okay, so those two and then there's one here up here that's easy to miss if you're not if you're not paying attention to the manual. Hi Bruno. Stealth burner is out of beta. Yes. Um okay, so we got those two. Is that all for this piece? Oh, okay. So that's all the heat sets for that part. Now we move on to this, which has a ton of heat sets. Now, the thing to note here is some of these heat sets, these two heat sets need to be installed um, under flush. So, hi, Troy. Hi, Fis. Hey, KB3D. So, these two, this one here, and this one here need to be installed about, uh, I thought it said about a millimeter, but it just needs to be under flush. So we're gonna start with this one. This one. And we got one in the end here. This is for the cable cover, uh, the screw that holds it closed. Now on the back, we have this one, and it is one that needs to be under flush. Like that. It will basically stop against a lip in the plastic. As long as you're not running your iron too hot and aren't pushing too hard, then you can you can insert it so if you see steady pressure and then it's gonna and then it's gonna stop and that's when you can stop inserting that and you see how that's just a little under flush yeah i can't wait for obsidian i'm very much looking forward to that <laughs> don't like the sound of under flush no one likes a floater <laughs> vector 3d made a very cool heat set press i just haven't I mean, it's it's fine. Just be careful. Uh, what do we got here? Should have been released with Revo or Revo delayed. E3 may have lost out on a huge profit on this. Uh, the, 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 the ecosystem will build. That's... Okay, and then we have one more over here that is not under flush. This one will be, will be flush. There's going to be lots of glasses switching today. So that is those. Where'd my mouse go? There we go. And then we have, oh, we have two more. And we did have another one in the other, in the other piece. So the heat sent there on the left is for a, a tool head PCB. If you're not using a tool head PCB, then you don't have to populate that one. Um, the one in the in the other part, the 
I don't remember what that part's called. That's these two are the both of these are for a toolhead PCB. If you're not going to use one, you can leave them out. I'm not going to be using a toolhead PCB on the Ender 3 to switch wire build, but I am going to put them in because one of these needs some extra attention. So let's put this one in first on the motor plate. I think this is the motor plate. Now, this one, it actually is more difficult to install with one of these uh, dedicated heat set tools because you can't go in straight on it because this, this uh, plastic is in the way. You can, I, you, if you're careful, you can place that in there. Let me see if I can get a good view here. And then come in, just, just put some some pressure from on the top. And if you do this light enough and careful enough, it'll take a little longer for the heat set to uh, to heat up enough to melt in because there's not enough as much surface area. But if you're careful, it will work in and have it inserted like that. Now, I think a soldering iron might be easier to do that with. But even with one of these tools, it's not bad. Um, and it's not a critical insert. It's just holding a tool head uh, PCB in there. That was a good low cost iron to buy for heat sets. I'm not sure. I've had this weller I use for like 20 years. <laughs> Is there a publicly announced release date for Obsidian? I don't, I don't believe so. They've been doing a lot of social media stuff, but I haven't heard of a release date. Okay, so these are for the toolhead PCBs. It's optional. We installed them just so I could show you that um, tough to get to one, but it's not, it's not impossible if you're careful and take your time. We have cable chain. Now I am installing this on a switch wire, uh, basically. So there is a unique cable chain for switch wire. And there are four, I'm gonna use generic um, cable chains. So there are four inserts to put in this part. I have my Weller set at about 450F. I don't know how accurate its temperature report is though. So I basically set it to about where it, um, the inserts go in relatively slow. If you set it too high, they just sink right in and then um, that's too much. You wanna put some gentle pressure and have them sink into the part But right now it's set to, the dial says just a hair under 450. And that's completely based on experimenting with this iron. Some materials require a change, like for the new um, side skirt fan mounts on Trident and 2.4, the, the nylon or whatever the fans are made out of requires, I think I put it up to like 500 or something in order to get those to go in and they still go in pretty slow. Push that against the table just to make sure it's straight. <sighs> Without doing the conversion, I mean, it says Fahrenheit on the, on the dial there. So someone can do the conversion for, for us. Okay, so those four inserts are done. And then we have the um, Guidler 
and shuttle set up. So there's two inserts to do here. So that's this piece and this piece. Yeah, you don't want them to just drop drop in. This one you want to make sure is just the tiniest bit um, under flush, just barely. You just don't don't want it to stick out. Push that against the surface of the table just to just to make sure. Okay, we can start start assembling, it looks like. I'm gonna assemble the guidler. Let me grab a few a selection of fasteners. So we're gonna do a 16 here. It goes in like that and it should together. Snug, that's good. Build an insert press. E3D, lots of teasing recently on Twitter, but the winner of the Didion nozzle. Oh yeah, QDP 2D. Um, she's supposed to, she thought she might tune in here according to a comment, so. Um. Hey, Andres. Then we're gonna put the BMG idler assembly in there. So let me grab that and we're gonna grease it. And so what do we have here? We're gonna need that shaft. And then obviously we, we want the one without the set screw hole idler. Let's throw these back in here so I don't lose them. So we get that little bit of grease. And let me grab, let me be right back. I need to grab a uh, paper towels. I forgot to grab those. So I'll be right. Where Nero kept whispering next week, last night about Obsidian. He knows something I don't then, because I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna take some of this. I don't even know. I think this came in a V0, an early V0 kit, but I'm not sure. Put a little bit in there. And then I'm gonna push this there and then put the other bearing on and if I cap the end then it'll force it forces the grease in between the bearings and then I just kind of rub it between my fingers just to distribute it and that is good enough get the grease off my fingers because we don't want it all over the outside of um, at least the the filament part of the idler Then this can go and snap into there. And then I'm gonna push it down on the side just to make sure the the um, the shaft there, the three millimeter shaft, is not sticking out the side. Then I'm gonna put just the tiniest bit 
of grease on the BMG gear here. Just the tiniest bit in a couple of spots and it'll it'll work its way around. There. Just making sure we don't get grease down here where the filament goes. Oh, that one's not super glue. No. <laughs> oh, hi, QDP 3D or 2D. We're going to see you at, at Earth. Okay. Um, so mind the orientation. So there is a recess in the part that is obvious that the large part of the, the teeth part of that go in. And then we're going to assemble the tensioner screw and the shuttle on here. So one of these cool LDO tensioning screws, but the Bontech original works. Some of the others work. <laughs> and then there's a little indexing tab here that the shuttle goes on. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't lock on. It, you just want to make sure that it sets there and then just put this on till, till there's some tension. Awesome. I'll see you there. I need to book my, I think the last thing I need to do is book my rental car. I've got a hotel and I've got the flight. I still need to do um, rental. Okay, that was easy. So is there anything? So a note on springs, let's, let's cover this. Longer, shorter, stiffer springs will change the tension characteristics and have an impact on how well the tension mechanism works. Consider buying the original Bontech part as those are known to work well. If sourced from a different vendor, check if it's roughly 12 millimeters long with an outer diameter of six millimeters and a wire thickness of one millimeter. So be careful with the spring. It's gonna, the, your, your selection of this screen is going to have an effect on your end results. Burnt in Phoenix. Um, yes, Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2 are official. There is a, the pinned post is the GitHub repository. QDP 2D, um, I found out on rental cars, if you have a Costco membership, um, they have really good deals. That, that's the best deals I've found um, without searching, like going with some sort of mainstream something. So if you didn't haven't looked at that and you have a membership, check it out. Um, someone was asking about cost to do the Ender 3 to switch wire conversion. The major critical components are going to be the rails, right? You can reuse a lot of the Ender 3. Whether you want to or not is a question, but the rails are the biggest change. Then you need five of them, five MG and 12 by 300s. Probably should have added a small text to the pinned link. That's true. Oh man, I'll have to check into that. Thanks for the tip. Yeah. Costco travel, I was happy to find that because it saved me a bunch of money for the Murph trip. And hopefully, I mean, I got Murph, I've got Orange County Maker Fair, and Earth I'm going to this year. And then I'm also going to SEMA. So, but there won't be a rental car there. We just, we just use Uber and stuff around SEMA, around Vegas. Do we know what has changed between beta and release? Some some minor things and a change log is going to come, um, but mostly aesthetics and a couple of very small tweaks in other areas of it. But I don't have a full like detailed list for you. Don't buy an Ender 3 just to build a conversion. I, I would agree with that. 
What does release candidate mean in relation to the stealth printer release? What that means is from a GitHub point of view, marking it as a release gives us an, a chance to correct any uh, maybe forgotten errors or, or things. Like for instance, the um, BMS or BMO, there's a seven fin and a six fin version. And there's some, some mistakes that were made in the export of those. Um, there's like two of them are actually the six fin version. And there's an issue out there and it's going to be corrected but it gives us a chance to um, correct those and then do an actual release. So there, there is not expected to be any, um, unless something, an issue comes up, but there's not expected to be any changes, any real changes. Okay. We are going to put the, the bearings in and the BMG spur gear in. So I guess we'll grab that right back out of here. And the bearings, these are the MR85s. And these are what come with um, most BMG setups. We're gonna put a bearing in there and that's a nice friction fit in, but isn't falling out. Did not see any cable cover in the repo. It should be in the stealth burner uh, repo. I grabbed, when I print, I, I grabbed it from there. So it, I, I expect it to be there. Um, if we go to STLs and clockwork, the cable door is what you're looking for. Cable door or cable door for PCB has some extra clearance for the, the stealth burner specific PCBs that are out there. Hi, Vincent. Uh, bearing fit here is important. So check that, check the notes. We have, so we put the bearing there, uh, put the bearing in the main body here. I can use the, oops, pulled this one out. There we go. That's in there. And then there is a M3 by six flathead. Now what this particular screw does is allow us, is allow us to adjust the mesh uh, between the BMG gears. So for now we're going to insert this screw here and that's that extra heat set that we put in we're going to put that in. Don't tighten it, just bottom bottom it out. Um Hi 007. PCB door works fine. Vincent Chung, thanks for coming a member. So that is um just just bottom it out, don't tighten it at all. There is in the guidler here there is a access hole to be able to get to that after everything's assembled. And we'll do some adjustments on that here in a bit. So we have the, the bearing, the screw, and now we need to assemble the, the drive assembly. So I have this and a set screw. And I'm using um, some parts from an LDO kit so these set screws have Loctite all pre-applied. If you're not, make sure you apply Loctite to the screw. So we're going to follow the, and I'm gonna need my glasses for sure for this. And then make sure we're tightening the set screw against the flat side of this. Oops, let me pull this off. There's a there's a flat ground in to the 
to the shaft here. So Loctite there, and then there is a spec here for we're looking for 15.6 millimeters for an initial position. We're going to set the final um, position later. And that is between the surface of here. So we're going to set this final. So I'm not even, I'm not going to, I'm just going to use my ruler to go about 15.5. A little closer. There, that's about 15.5. We're gonna fine tune that. Dune 591, thanks for becoming a member. Hey, Edge of 3D. Welcome. Um, that's anything. Hey, G Funny Money. So, Jig for setting the distance when? It's going to vary, though. The, depending on the exact Bond Tech gear, all of this, you really need to fine tune this. So a jig is actually a bad idea here because then it's gonna cause folks to assume that that's gonna be where it needs to be. So, and then we talk about thread locker here. We talk about the original Bond Tech parts are highly recommended for this. Once again, the quality components you use and the care and assembly is going to directly affect your level of success, right? So now we're gonna assemble this, and then we are going to do an alignment check on the, on the gears. So let's get this assembled. So I'm gonna put this in this side, and then the motor plate. There is an index, there's a part of the plastic that indexes into here, there we go. Now this is together, and then we're going to use, what were those? M3 by 25s. So I think these 20s, is that right? Nope, those are the my 25s, okay. So we're gonna go here. Um, what do we, I doubt even the 20% of the VNG part using Vorons are original Bontech products. So yeah, Jig wouldn't be, yeah. <laughs> if quality affects, if quality in affects quality out, why did you start with an Ender 3? It's a good point, but the, the changed parts are quality, right? <laughs> Rudders, I didn't originally either. Then screws start falling out of linear rails. Oh, I don't use um, I don't use Loctite on the linear rail stuff. Only basically on grub screws are the only thing I use. Okay, so we are going here and here. So there and there. And yes, I know I have the ES15. He's got me. This is true, but there's a difference. We're improving something. Okay, now we are going to see where, and we can move this gear back and forth. So here, check if the filament, check if the filament path aligns with the tooth section of the drive gear. So we are going to look in here and we're gonna, we can grab a piece of filament and dry, push it through. Let me see, let me grab a piece of filament and help to eyeball that. Also, it'll help to make sure that your filament path is 
uh, straight. And then there is some play back and forth, intentional play. You want to make sure that that play ends up basically centering the um, the filament on the grooves in the gears. So you can go to either side, but since it floats, you want it to center around there. And it, and it was, so I am going to, because I didn't torque that down yet. I am going to sneak in here and torque that screw. And that's about three Ugga Duggas. Not too much because it's a small set screw, but. Okay, so we got those. Oh, this is where we insert the filament and check the alignment. With the filament inserted, verify if the filament path and drive gears are aligned, loosen the set screw and adjust the position of the drive gear if needed. The drive shaft must not touch the motor housing. Make sure it does not sit. Yeah, we are we are good on this. The Finch just just booked your hotel for Irv. Awesome. Bill Brothers, I used a Wera torque driver and had problems with the X bottom rail. Oh, okay. So that's why you went with the thread locker for that. Um, okay, so we did all of this. So pay, pay attention to these notes here. And now we can put the Guidler assembly in and an M3 by 25 on the bottom. So the Guidler assembly should just slide in here and go in like that. And then an M3 by 25 into the bottom here. Oh, I've got the wrong bit. Oh, where did I put the bits? Hold on. Where did I put those? Uh, which I think it's that one. Hi, Shane. Okay, let's let's satisfy the ES15 crowd. Oh, this is where. There we go. And that's about one Ugga Dugga. And that moves nice and smooth. Yeah, so we don't want to over tighten that. So maybe, maybe call that half an Ugga Dugga and then adjust from there. But that moves nice, so we are good. And we got a latch and another M3 by 25. So the latch goes in here. And I always have a little bit of fun getting this um, lined up. Oh, that time it worked. And the same thing here, you don't want that to be tightened to the point that it doesn't move freely, just, just snug, and then it should latch on, so. So the, this blue, Troy, is um, Sparta Sparkle Sky Blue. Sparta 3D Sparkle Sky Blue. Now this whole setup, is kind of nice because you can undo this and you can pull this completely open and free um, and inspect the gears. And when you close this, it should lock in. Any plan to build a VZ bot? There are no plans right now, but not for any reason other than there are no plans. <sighs> okay. 
Okay, so this, this that that extra screw in there, that flathead um, M3 by six that I talked about, just touching the bottom, not tightening. This is where that comes in. So turning the thumb screw clockwise will increase the tension and grip on the filament. Too much tension will result in print issues. Now this anti-squish thingamajig, that's the technical term Wiley and or Dinar came up with, the anti-squish thingamajig. Um, that's that M3 by six flathead. Soften, softer and flexible materials will deform and extrude poorly under too much tension. Clockwork 2 adds an adjustment feature to set the minimum distance between the drive gear and the idler, limiting the squish on the filament and to prevent the gears from meshing too tightly or binding up the extruder. And you can feel that if you turn, but there's an access slot here for the, the BMG gear. You can feel the, as you turn that, you can feel the gears in the BMG gears meshing. And you can adjust going through here, you can loosen this. So if I loosen this too much, this will just, um, th there's no resistance and, it, and it's not a good idea. You don't want zero. You want those, you want probably to just barely feel those, um, those meshing. And I need to actually latch this in order for that to be effective. So I'm gonna tighten this until I can just feel those meshing. Hi, TC TCO from Romania. Welcome. Hi, Zarp. Um, Sparta 3D is sold out of Spartals. Oh, it is? They're sold out? Hi, East Power from Kenya. How are you? Okay, so that's that new little adjustment feature. That's new for um, Clockwork 2, and it's been there since um, for several of the betas. And now we're going to put the stepper in. Let me figure out where I put that. Where did I put the stepper? Because I forgot to grab it. I'll have to be right back. I hit the button. I must not have hit the right button. I kind of pointed at it and, and I must have missed. Derek Hawkinson, thank you for becoming a member. Bill Brothers and Gary Putnam, thanks for gifting the memberships. That wasn't intentional. Okay. So we have the, this happens to be an LDO. There's several makers. I think Moons makes one and OMC makes one. Um, this is the 20 millimeter, 36 millimeter pancake stepper. It has an integrated 10 tooth gear. Hi, Jose. And that bolts on right on the back here. And there is, so this, this mounting screw here comes in from this side is slotted so we can adjust the mesh. Uh, between that and the Bontech gear. So now we need an M3 by 30 for the top one, which is another. The next thing of fasteners. I have an unopened spool of Sparta Sparkle Sky Blue. I'm willing to swap for a raspberry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> East Power Engineering, how do you get membership? There should be a join button somewhere. Okay, so.
So even with this guy, there we go. That there. Sure, good luck finding someone to buy that. Yeah. Okay, so the top one there, and then back to the instructions. This brings the filament into a good spot, or the wiring into a good spot. And then we need a washer and an M3 by eight. M3 by eight and a M3 washer. So an M3 washer, M3 by eight, and I am going to use a regular driver for this because this is a little tricky. And I'm gonna go in here. There is an access hole here. So I'm gonna hold these here, get the get the driver on it, and then it's easier to go kind of upside down here and get that into the into the stepper. And then loosen that so we can still move it. And now we're gonna check tension by wiggling the wiggling the, the BMG gear here. And you want just the tiniest bit of back and forth play. Just the tiniest bit. And it's actually, I got it right there, so it's good. So I'm gonna tighten this and then I'm gonna check again. Hi Jake from State Farm. Oh, I'm not. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Thanks for being here. Yeah, everything is good. The tiniest, tiniest little bit of play. If you've ever um, assembled or worked on RC cars, it's, a, it's the same concept. You want a tiny bit of play for thermal expansion and any out of round in the, in the gear. You don't want these to bind. Binding is going to increase the stress on the stepper, increase heat, increase wear on the gears. This is a Delrin or whatever gear uh, meshing against a metal gear on the stepper. So you don't want that to bind up and cause extra wear and heat. Set the gear meshing, they talk about it here. Tightening when it's done and checking it again. All of that that I just went through is talked about. And then the cable or chain. Cable chain M3 by 20. That would be one of these. I think there's an M3 by eight from the other side. Okay. So M3 by 20 from this side. And then an M3 by eight from the other side, but I'm not gonna be able to get into that with my ES15. Just doing yard work. And wasp got you in the leg and face, ouch. We've got a bit of a wasp problem here. Fortunately, so far I haven't been, been bit, stung. And that's on there. Hey, Boron Noob, how much space between the cable bridge and the stepper? So this is a little, um, this is going on a switch wire. So a switch wire moves the, the cable mount back about, I think it's about four millimeters, three or four millimeters back. So this isn't a, on a V2 or Trident, it's going to be much closer to the stepper than this. Uh, Kenneth, can we unbuild our CW1 now to build the CW2? Yes, but you need to change the stepper. It's 18 months to build a new... Uh, okay. And then we have the M3 by 16 for 
the cable cover. Okay. That is this guy. And you have to open the latch in order to get access to it. And this is another one that the PS15 won't hit. And then this threads into plastic here. So just, it's a lot of threads though, so I wouldn't worry about it. You want this to be tightened down just to the point of touching so it still rotates out of the way. So maybe bottom out and then back half a turn. So this moves out of the way and then we'll need a M3 by six button head to close it. So there we go. So that is clockwork two, right? That's clockwork two. So clockwork two assembled. Uh, do you know the RCF tool head board or Harks board will mount to this? There is a stealth burner version of this. The older versions don't fit well because of connector clearance. I'm sure someone's going to come out with a mod for that though. Hey Steve, guess who changed to CW2 and didn't realize the gear count was different. Oh yeah, I've done that. It's a 50 to 10 instead of 50 to 17 ratio. Hey, Lan over. How's that? How's that Trident going? Uh, what do we got? Did I? What did I miss? Modbot. I didn't know to do. Okay, I'm too far back. <laughs> if I miss something, feel free to re repose the question. Okay, so that is there. So now let's go on to the next one. Toolhead. So we're going to have some unique things to do um, for the toolhead I've chosen for this build. The um, Stealth Burner setup supports many different hot ends. I'm using the um, Protoform, the Protoprint. I keep getting that wrong. The Protoprint Raptor is what I will be using on this build. And it is just a um, V6 groove mount. However, the wiring on this is very different. Um, I'm going to have to do just route it a little different than normal. Uh, so we will cover that right now. So on, on most of these, you're going you're going to be able to follow the wire channel on most um, hot ends, you're gonna be able to fo follow the wire channel as intended, which is entering here and exiting here. On this, the, um, the heater block goes all the way up. So there's no room to take the wires that way. So I'm gonna take them up and over and kind of sneak in the side of the, um, of the wire channel here. Can you show the motor gear and large gear meshing as we have the large gear meshing because the shaft has a little bit of sliding. I, I can't, I don't know if I can get to that. I can't get that on camera. I just can't get that on camera. Yeah. Sanity, I don't think it's going to require a mod. It's just going to take some creative um, wire routing. So, and part of that creative wire routing is going to be to remove this, um, this connector, this microfit connector. So let's do that. So frenzied narwhal, what's special about this hot end? It, it is, um, it is a groove mount but it doesn't necessarily have a proper orientation because it has a round heater block. 
It also has this um, integrated, so it's basically finger tight, no no hot tightening. It's an integrated nozzle and heat brake. So if we pull this out, that's the heat brake and nozzle setup. So, and then, so no chance of uh, a filament leak. And then this is just finger tight and that's done. Sanity could probably talk to any other um, possible advantages to this particular hot end. Steve, no Revo Voron. For this build, I wanted to use the, the Raptor here. Um, Revo Voron will be going on other builds, but this one is getting the, the Raptor. You do a conversion like Steve is doing, it should be even less. Yeah. Um, let me let Charlie in. Oh. I thought I heard him at the door. That wasn't him. <laughs> That's a good question, bloody JMF. I don't know. <laughs> There. I'm going to need some wire. I'm going to use the printer as a stand there. This stuff out of the way. And I'm going to remove this connector. It has replaceable heater core and thermistor separately. Okay. So I like the official Molex tool for removing these. I've gotten reasonably good at it. So let's see if I can still do that even after I've said that. It's a little twist instead of bend. There we go. And then I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife because it's got a nice sharp edge. I'm going to bend these back into place so I can reuse them. But expect, expect you can only do this once, maybe twice before those break. And you don't want to bend them too far back. So back into place. Oh, this one could use just a little more. There. Now those should still work. So they have these little... PTFE or whatever lined wires for the thermistor, I need to extend those. And I don't think I'm gonna need to extend the heater wires. So I'm going to solder and heat shrink some extensions onto these wires. Is there a part number for this tool? Um, I don't know if that's a part number. It's an MF3 pin remover. I don't know if that number 11030043YT. It's for microfits. Yep. Microfit, microfit three extractor. There you go. Okay. I'm going to grab some blue PTFE insulated wire. Oh yeah, one one zero three zero zero four three. That's what's written on it. Thanks, DJ Natty. The white wires are thermistor, blue or blue or heater. What do you? What are we talking about? These wires should be the thermistor, right? Or am I completely wrong? Or is that the heater? Are these things the heater? Are th so the the sanity, the the wires that I just depinned, those are the thermistor?
There are no blue wires. We have clear PTFE lined wires. Are those the heater? Those transparent. Oh, well, I was I was backwards. The transparent or the heater. Those are some thin gauge wires for the heater. Where would I find this out? Is this on there? Is this on their website? Is that right? Dragon? Raptor. Raptor. Not dragon. The transparent is a heater. Okay. I don't want that. Where is, is there anything under support? Interesting. Is there a manual? This is a model. Are there manuals for these? Raptor hot end installation manual. Let's look at this. Definitely we can check the resistance, but resistance is futile. Let's look at their manual. Oh, did they have an English version of the manual? Not that I saw. Let's see if there's anything here. Okay, well, that doesn't really help. <laughs> it doesn't help me. <laughs> Let's see what the resistances are. Just for our fun. John Claude, three months. Hey Steve, replace CV axles in the wife's car. Ooh, that sounds not fun. I've done that more than a few times. Okay, so we want to, we can touch one side, but when you're measuring resistance, you can't touch the other. Otherwise the resistance of your body gets factored in. The resistor at room temperature is 1.1 K ohms. The heater is 11.8 or 12 ohms. The heater is 12 ohms. So, so 24 volts, so E over I times R is current. Oh, is it a PT-1000? Oh, that's good to know too. Um, so 24, so it's two, two amps. So that's a 50 watt heater. Is it a 50 watt heater? About, is it a, is it about a 50 watt heater? That'll confirm right there. And, and that sounds right. So that definitely sounds right. So heater of those. So that changes the wires I'm going to use. Okay. I'm going to solder. I'm going to solder a couple of 20 gauge wires to that then. Yep. Yep. I remembered some of my high school electronics. So let's go about that much. I'll adjust on the other end. Could I please open the manual again? Um, sure. Is this, can I get to it in my history? There we go. They look really thin, so I'm going to solder some 20 gauge to them and we'll see how this goes.
is it a PTC or whatever style heater? Is that what's changing things? Okay, back to here. They are solid core, yep. So I will probably get these routed and maybe put some heat shrink around them and the thermistor wires here to kind of strain relieve them. So I'm going to switch over to soldering mode. And some heat shrink. Heat shrink there. And I can put those on that on after. Might as well grab the turn the temperature up. Okay. that there and that there to tin the ends. And here we go. Tin the ends, tin the ends of these, hold your breath. I forgot to put my fan up. I want a little more solder on that, so. There we go. one and let's bend this one up so I can actually get to it there's two and we're looking for full fillets completely surrounded in solder nice and shiny Oop. and don't catch the nozzle or the, the tip cleaner on the connector. <laughs> uh, John Klopp, thanks for gifting the memberships. The temp sensor has a textile cover and it does. Yep. It's going to be interesting to see if there's a patent war between E3D and Protoprint. And then, yeah, I'm not forgetting heat shrink too, but the ends, the ends are open. So I didn't have to worry about where it was when I was soldering. So now I can put the heat shrink on. The the Raptor uses the regular V6 mount, yes. So now I'm going to hold those around the center of the joint and then go over here to my heat gun. and get them insulated. Is it safe to solder them that close to the heater? Absolutely. They will not get anywhere close to temperature that it would be a problem. 
Okay, so all of these are long enough. Now the, the problem I ran into, and let's see if I can illustrate this. And let's take the, the sock off to help. The problem I ran into is when this goes onto here, there is no room for the wires to sneak out into this area to go up the normal path. So what I'm going to do is run them. So I'm running these up through some grooves that are in the heat sink and over, and this is going partially through a groove and over like that. And I think I'm going to throw a bigger piece of heat shrink down around there to kind of strain relieve these. So let me do that, I think. And this is just considerations for this particular hot end. This, it's just for this. So I'm gonna put a piece of heat shrink here and go over all of them. And then hoping that that adequately strain relieves all of this. And then we can take it up through the, take it up through the ed, the side of the, of the tool head here. So more. Sanity, that's what you did. So I'm on the right track, awesome. Okay, so I've got those there. Now we are going to take these and I'm gonna sneak these up through, through the side here, through this hole, I think like this. And then that's gonna go, and those are just gonna hang out back there. The wires are gonna go right up there. And I think that'll be okay. In the meantime, we need to put a couple of heat sets in, four heat sets in here for the uh, ADXL, and then to assemble it. Oh, and I left my soldering iron on, so it is very, very hot. What do I have here? That stage my setup here because I don't want to wait for it to cool down. Set that there. Set that in a metal tray. I think this can just go on. Ah. There we go, that's better. There we go. <laughs> Turn the temperature down to heat set duty. I need I just bend them downwards and routed through the same hole from the bottom. I'm hoping this, this works well, I think it will. Now the E3D bought a EU company, Zodiac. Okay, so we're back up to temperature. Let's put in some heat sets. And then I gotta get back to the stealth burner manual. Here, let's do that first. Let's do that first because I don't wanna, I wanna follow the manual. So we got the right tool head. Oh, that's where we were. Okay, perfect. That's where we were. So let's get these in.
Well, it's gonna look good. Ah. So I brought that out. Do, do, do. Print stealth burner and pin mods now. Oh, you're printing. Cool. Okay, so that is there. Back to the manual. Revo stuff, wire routing, and then two M3 by 16s to clamp it together. Oh, and then we're not gonna, we're gonna put those in, but we're not gonna tighten them yet because we need to get the correct PTFE length. So we're gonna put this now here. So now those wires, and when this is clamped down, it should, Make sure this is all going nice and tight. Yeah, right there is where I want it, okay. So now the M3 by 16s here. Now that doesn't rotate. The wires are out of the way. Now I'm not gonna terminate these yet because I don't know exactly how long I want them. I'm hoping it'll be fine just this length so I don't have to recrimp these, but we'll still we'll still wait and see. Um else should be good. Oh, we need the we should get so this is mounting bolts for a rigid mount, and we've got a groove mount here. And then we want a PTFE tube with 11 millimeters sticking out the top. So I've got a piece of just Capricorn here. We're gonna go there, and then we're gonna get our... Oh, let's see. Let's make a, a rough estimate here. Need better glasses. The the top of the groove mount sticks up just a little bit. I'm gonna take a little mark here. And see what the total here ends up being. I think this ends up being about 37 millimeters. Does that seem about right for a V6? Thirty-seven. Let's see what the see if we can get a caliper down in here. Twenty-eight. So that's about right. It's about it's 28 millimeters the depth of the of the hole here 28 millimeters plus and it in the it sticks about a millimeter almost a millimeter up from the surface of here the groove mount does so plus 10 so 38 is what we'd be looking at so let's go 38 38 millimeters on the on the tube so Um, need to get, well, I'm gonna, this, oh, shoot, I'm gonna, I can't get to my stuff here. There's something in the way. I've got a tool, I've got this little tool I use. <clears throat> and this, so I want a clean side of this and I want about 38 millimeters. So we're gonna put this in here and we're going to go
38 millimeters on the, on the calipers. I got really close. I'm gonna measure 38 millimeters here, which is almost there. There we go, 38 millimeters. This, this little jig that I'm using here is on my GitHub. It is one of the things that's out there. And then take a sharp blade and cut this flush. So that's flush. And then I have the uh, countersink bit that I bought. You've seen me do this before. And I'm gonna put a chamfer, an inside chamfer there. And that's gonna be the side that points towards clockwork two. And then we're just gonna make sure the other side is yeah, and it's it's nice and cut square. So the whole thing can come off of here now. Pull that out of there. And then we just wanna make sure we put the, the square cut side into the hot end. So now this goes right there. And this is gonna float here on this groove mount on, a, on any of the others, it gets kind of clamped in between the plastic parts. So, and then we should end up, let's see how close we are to 11 millimeters here. We can't really, we're just over 10 and then that little extra lip is almost one. So we're right there at 11, so we're good. I'm gonna put the pieces. This, and where is my, Ah, here. Here, this is what I'm this is what I'm using. I don't know if it's the best tool for this. It's a three flute counter slink. D E I got it off Amazon. Yeah, I don't even trust that little this little cutter. This little cutter, don't trust it to cut it every a straight cut. I made a tools like yours, only 10 millimeters tall. Just use it like a spacer and cut flush. That's a great idea. It's a great idea. Okay, so PTFE tube is done. And remember, if you're not using Clockwork 2 for this, that length may vary depending on what tool head you're using. Yeah, I think it's a 60 degree chamfer, Mr. Clown, that I use. Just some sort of chamfer is what's needed. Oh, now we're on to the stealth burner stuff. Put these things away. I should put the sock back on the hot end. Otherwise, I'm going to forget it, huh? I'm going to lose it. There we go. Two pieces of the puzzle done. So the main body has some built-in bridges um, for some wire management. We're gonna cut those out. Um, looks like a nice chamfer bit with the amount of time you use that. It looks like it has nice sharp edges. I only cut plastic with it. So it's never seen anything but that use. 
I'm just carefully cutting these bridges out. And I don't need to cut this one over here out because I'm not gonna route the wires that way. <clears throat> Hi, Super Smash. <clears throat> okay, so we removed the supports. And now we are going to solder the NeoPixels. So this page is useful. It gives us wire lengths, recommended wire lengths. You can get away with a little shorter on some of them, but I cut, I cut wires to exactly these lengths. So I did one set at 120 millimeters and two sets at 100 millimeters. And we're basically, basically just gonna daisy chain the NeoPixels. Um, I'm using 28 gauge, uh, silicone insulated wiring. I got off Amazon. It is at the limit of the outer, um, diameter that would probably work well for this. So I cut them to length and I stripped the ends, but I have not, um, tinned them or soldered the NeoPixel. So we're going to do that right now. So we will need all our stuff back out. Looks like a freebie Sparta 3D exacto knife there. That is exactly what it is. That is exactly what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I need to sort these because I let them get tangled up. These are, these are the 120s. So we'll start with that. I'm just gonna try to get those all in there just to tin them. I have 30 gauge PTFE cable, is that fine? Absolutely. That'll be fine. This is just what I ended up buying and using. So let me switch the tip on my soldering iron again now that it's cooled down. And raise the temperature and heat it up. I think I'll go with the light blue and a dark gray for your E3 to switch wire. Yeah, that'll look good. I keep modding my printer rather than make the serial video. Just make it clean, as long as it's clean, safe. Managed wiring, deck panels in place, and printing. Okay. So that's those. I'm going to put those in a set over there. And I need a set of the 100 millimeters. I'm going to just going to batch all of them. I'm going to tin, tin them all. That's both sides of that set. One more.
And Charlie wants out, so we'll let him out here in a second. Oh, someone got him. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so those are all tinned. Get rid of this, and we're going to bring in that off and go back here. Catch up on chat. For cereal, if your <clears throat> electronics are separate, do you need deck panels? Um, I do. I would not consider. I would. I would have a hard time considering a printer with the electronics completely separate from the from it to be a Voron. So, if you're going that far out of in, into the mods, we need to see it. But I, you're going to get some little extra scrutiny there. Voron noob. I generally set the iron to about 600 F for soldering. Can you use the new laser to burn the Ender logo off? The Ender, there's no more Ender logos. No more Ender logos. Okay, so I'm going to use this, this vise to hold the NeoPixels. And we're gonna come up and maybe something like that Let's see how this looks so i don't know if we can get a neopixels have an in and an out so i am going to solder these all of these with the in down towards me so that's just and then I'm going to clamp them in here and let's see what we can do about an, a camera angle. Let's see how this does. What kind of laser did I get? So I, I uh, Daniel at ModBot, we talked at Murph and he was kind enough to send me an extra um, diode laser that he had in order to dip my feet in the in the laser cutting uh, market. So I'm playing around with the Offero Laser 2. And that's what we covered in the members stream yesterday. So I'm going to tin these and let's see if we can get some sort of Tin each pad. Don't leave your iron on there too long. Go. Getting any kind of what are you wearing? Printer. Printer in an insulated metal enclosure, so moved electronics out of heat for longevity. We'd still need to see it there. Goes dog. Alright, so we're starting with the 120 millimeter wires on the inside of this NeoPixel. And they are marked so that in, in this orientation, the left pin is voltage, the center one is signal, and the right one is ground. This focus is absolutely horrid. And I, can I do any better with this? Let's see if we can get this bigger in the... Is that any better? <clears throat> well, I'm going to put a one... Two, uh, oop. Okay. 
There we go. Look at this. So what we're looking for is to make sure we have good fillets on the solder joints and shiny. The focus on that I'm sorry about. So good fillet joints and shiny. Now for the out, we're gonna come in from the same direction with the 100 millimeter wires. One. Two and three. Shiny fillets, no stray wires. It's done. Now we move on to NeoPixel number two. Where did the rest of my NeoPixels go? Oh, they're there. Same thing in in towards me. In towards me. Tin the pads. That better? Let's try that. Now we get the out from this. Oh, I let go too soon. There we go. Out, out, and then the last set of wires. And then the last NeoPixel. And we only have to tin the in the inside of this one. I need to figure out a better macro or close-up camera setup, it looks like. I don't remember having this much trouble with focus last time I did this. One, two, and three. And now the harness is done. Okay, let's see how bad that was. How many, how many comments on that focusing? <laughs> miss anything I think I started my first modem was in 2400 baud is that what we're talking about so we have our harness I haven't put the connector to the rest 
going back to the controller on it yet. So I printed a set of the transparent parts out of Pet G. And a light shield. Now on the the light shield piece, which is this, I recommend um, deburring the edges to take care of any um, elephant's foot. And I'm just gonna scrape the side of a X-Acto knife here along the edges. Just get rid of any extra, just to make sure it gets goes into the pocket for it well. Slow data rates. Oh yeah, on the old, old stuff. And then this piece with the logo inserts into the light shield here. should oh i've got it backwards it goes it only goes in one way but then that looks like that and make sure it's flush on the back started when john asking who came up with the serial numbers and i went with before voron mine were usually oh <laughs> i'm sorry you sir are not wrong nobody any of you can do proper humor now i'm hot Hot garbage on solder, so I threw a few bucks. Yeah, so there are several of these harnesses that are uh, people are making, companies are making. Um, so I would check and check your favorite Voron vendor. I bet you they have something. Yeah, the soldering is not um, too bad if you're if you are uh, used to it. Okay. There is a pocket in here that this goes in. So it's kind of fiddly, but sometimes I just kind of try a couple of times. Oops. Oh, this is why we got rid of all that elephant's foot. How do you like your rep box? I just got back from Home Depot, a two half inch conduit to make my own filament shelf. I like the rep rack. I have not yet used the rep box. I plan on it. Okay. So you get that in the right way and it snaps, it, it falls into place. And I just use the, ed the end of a screwdriver to make sure it's in there flush. If you print it from resin, make sure to scale it down a little bit. Okay. I haven't tried this in resin. This has a couple of um, features on it, kind of spring features. The, the, the outer one is to, is to kind of hold it in the pocket. The inner one is to help hold the NeoPixel in place. I have found that just cutting across that, that support just to break it free uh, really helps this whole thing to to work better. So just make sure you don't cut into any soft bleedy bits. There. So just to just to make those free and they're just a little springy. So now your first NeoPixel here will go in right like that. And then maybe a little, just a little push on a screwdriver or something to make sure it's seated in there. Now this, with the wires up, 
will slide into right in there. So let's detangle all our other wires here. So those go off to the side and then these get routed through this cable channel through here. Little screwdriver would probably help push things into place. Let through one, and through another. And then the NeoPixel slides in right there like that. Now the last pixel goes through this channel way. Pushing wires, pushing all this stuff down out of the way. It'll pretty much tuck into pockets there and stay out of the way. Then we can kind of push this back underneath this other bridge and tuck the pixel in there. And now all of that is out of the way. Wonderful job by Wiley on all this wire management. It's so nice. Tuck all those down out of the way. Did you cut those bridge support thingies? I did on this side. I didn't cut it on this side because I didn't need to. So now the main, the, the input goes through this channel up here and we'll also be putting a fan in here that'll cover that'll follow this channel as well. That goes up like that. Nice out of the way. Hey freak. Cool. Okay, I have a couple of fans. So I'm using stuff that I've had on. So part of the part of this um, Ender 3 to switch wire build is using stuff that I have on hand, maybe stuff I've already used in something else. So I am recycling the fans. Let's go back to the instructions. Because I kind of left those behind. Max, welcome. So back to the instructions. This was putting in the LED, assembling the little light shield, routing the wires, putting the light shield into the housing. There's a, the wire routing we did. And the supports that'll break away. They will break away. And then putting in the hot end fan. Okay, so I have a hot end fan. Hopefully the wires are all long enough. But make sure that it is label side in. That's really all there is to that. Just snap it in, the little supports will break out of the way. And then we've got hot end fan there. We put wires in the manual. We didn't, Dunar did, or Wiley did. I don't know who actually generated the graphics, but yes. <laughs> now the 5015 fan gets the ears cut off. Jake from Steak Farm, thanks for becoming a member. 
Let me grab a non-cut 5015 like this. So this is what they look like unmolested. We take the cover off and we cut the ears off and we get this. So make sure that um, when you cut the ears off, you, you sand it flush, basically. So Steve build, Sanity build, John, I'm prepared to order a V0.1 early mid next week and don't want to deal with ordering 20 things. What kit bomb in a box would you suggest? Um, I don't know which ones to avoid. I think the I think the question I'd rather go with on there is which to avoid, and maybe some chat can give some suggestions there. Okay, so once you've cut the ears off, the the mounting holes off of a regular fifty fifteen, this will slide in like so, and that support over there will break out of the way, and then this will sit in, and then we need two. This will this will cover here. So we have wire routing. We cut the ears off. And then two M3 by six flatheads to hold it in place. Let me grab those. Oh. And you don't want to torque these down. All they do is prevent the fan from pushing back into the housing. Max, thanks for becoming a member. Okay. So that is the Stealth Burner fan assembly. Can you, can you let us know if V0.1 will be easy to build as a V0.2? Are the changes only to the printed parts? I can't let you know that for sure, but to the best of my recollection, most of it's gonna be printed parts. <laughs> I know that's not a great answer because 0.2 is still kind of being finalized. Um, we showed off, so I can talk about it all. We showed off um, to what, it's at now at Murph, and that was new skirts, which is all printed parts. Um, you don't have to put the display in, but the little uh, V0 display is has a nice little mount and integrated. Um, the stealth burner, mini stealth burner, is all just printed parts. I don't know what else might happen though beyond that. To what we showed at Murph, it's just printed parts. Uh, for the sun on 24 volt centrifugal fans, KB3 D cells are way off center and they are mounted. It, they vary, all of the fans vary so much. There isn't a standard for exactly the dimensions and the size of the center and where it is. Um, so this, the end, this end result is the best compromise between all of them that we knew about. I know Wiley spent a ton of time, um, trying to make that as good as possible. Okay, so those are on. And then the X carriage. So at that point, at this point, we have built Stealth Burner with Clockwork 2. This goes on here. This ends up going, all the wires go in. So <laughs> let's make this look a little better. Let's take the screw off here. So that opens up. These wires bend back, and all of these wires can go through here. I want to make this kind of shown.
show this thing off pretty much. These go back and then this. That goes there. That goes on there. And then this covers all of that. And now we end up with, check that out. <laughs> so that is a completed um, stealth burner and clockwork two assembly off the printer. The difference on the X carriage is that if we pull clockwork two off of here, and put the PTFE back in there, is that it mounts to the printer from the front. So there are two M3 by eights that go into holes here and on the X carriage, they go into heat sets on the front instead of the, the bolts from the back. So this is way nicer for assembly. Okay. Put some of this stuff away. So, Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2 is done. That is assembled. This is going to go on the Ender 3 to switch wire, which we're going to continue making progress on right now. And just set these aside for right now. Put some fasteners away. When is Stealth Burner headed out of beta? Monkey Butler Labs, check the pin. It's out of beta. <laughs> Released on Friday, Saturday, released on Saturday, yesterday. Um, did I miss anything up here? I remember you fighting Wiley on those screws? Yes. <laughs> I got here late. No, no problem. I'm just teasing you, Monkey Butler Labs. It was just released yesterday. I don't blame anybody for not knowing. Just teasing. Yeah, it was like 10 a.m. Pacific yesterday. Okay, we've got a printer with cat hair. Hey, Gadget Angel, welcome. Where's mini stealth burner beta I want in? <laughs> and not there. It was shortly before my stream. It was at the start of my stream. <laughs> what was the name of that jig you used to cut the PTFE? Um, if you go to, here, let's, let's take a little sidetrack. If you go to Voron Users GitHub, something on my keyboard there, and Printer Mods, And let's go down to STV PTRSN. I'll post a link in, in the chat here in a second. You go here and then go to parts, jigs, and mods and tools and jigs. It's the PTFE flush cutter here. So let's go, let's just grab this one. That jig is located there. This is going to bug me, so let me put this out of the way. Oh. 
Hi, James. <laughs> okay. Ender 3 Pro to switch wire conversion. Last stream, we got to this point. Um, things are moving. Gantry moves great. I made a mistake on the rear skirt. I printed two of the front center and then wondered where the power where the power cord goes or where the power inlet goes. Um, how's the buggy build prints going? I need to pick up on that. I need to I need to pick that project back up. It's it hasn't been going, but it will be. So I didn't have a way to plug in the power because I made a mistake in what I was printing. So what I did after stream is designed a new side piece so I could use the power inlet that the Creality came with. So it, it comes with, the Ender 3 comes with this style um, inlet. So I modeled a quick piece that goes there. Now it's gonna need a couple of inserts. So let's let's go ahead and do that. Oh, I was thinking this would be a stealth burner only stream. No, it's stealth burner and ender three progress. I, I wanted to do both. I didn't want I didn't want either people who were looking for either to have to wait. So even if it's not, it would have been better from a YouTube, whatever point of view. I'm just doing it this way. Ah, oh, did you send that piece to Dart Dog too? I did. I did send this. I think he's gonna go with in a different direction, but it's that's that's his. That's fine. This is just the way I modeled it up, and this is what I'm gonna use. Um, I think he's gonna. I think he's. They are going to um, rotate it 90 degrees so it mounts uh, vertically here instead of horizontally. But it's got a couple of heat sets to put in. So there was some mention, and I brought this up on stream before, there was some mention that when everything's assembled, there's a contact here that's exposed and you could potentially get your fingers in and complete a circuit and get shocked. So the setup, the way I, I built this and designed it is there's one heat set here and then the, the inlet goes in and then the other heat set is in this piece that will block that contact. So, calling it a shock blocker. Oh, and I need to put two heat sets here for the, perfect, I have two more. Hey, Maker Viking. Okay, so this heat set, And then two more here, skirt. Okay, push the glasses. So we have this. Then this piece, and then I think I need a couple of flathead screws. I only have stainless. Let's see if an M3 by, yep. So an M3 by 10 will barely work. And there was, but I think it'll be okay. So that's that one. And then the top one, it's fine. PF Dennis, thanks for gifting the memberships. So 
So now we're there. Everything's there and you can't get shocked by that piece. So now we're going to replace this. So oh, that goes down on the floor, apparently. I don't want to wait. And Stelter has a release cannon. It's perfect time to make that change. Uh oh. And then what were the fasteners on the back here? Looks like. These. Link for the power inlet. Um, I'm pretty sure that Dark Dog is is going is including a version of this in in his modifications. If anybody wants the part, you feel free to message me on Discord. But I'll let um, whatever for this mod, I'll let Dark Dog um, release what his final vision or what he wants for this. If anybody wants it outside of that, then I don't I don't care. I can I can post it. I mean, I can give it to you on via DM. Let's see. I am missing something. for my doo -doo -doo. okay and the two and three by eights on the inside the nice thing about this location of the power inlet versus the center is we can keep the ac wires over here on the side of the printer instead of going across the middle We'll also release, oh, an updated version in the following week with your suggestions and some fixes, changes proposed in the community. That's awesome. That's good to hear, Dark Dog. I like the, I like the continued um, development here. Okay, so that is on. Now we can move on. Let's put the front skirts the front skirts on and kind of make this look a little more complete. Got those prepped. So I did not have any M5 by um, 60 fasteners. So I went to my local Ace Hardware and found some. They are Phillips head, but they'll work. If you can think of a way to make this assembly go together without having to buy those, that would be awesome. Maybe do something like diagonal fasteners or something to be able to shorten them. Because I understand the need for this to be for the long fasteners because of this spacer, but, oops, Phillips. But something, some way to make it not need those would be nice. <laughs> Missing Charlie. Charlie is asleep. He is fast asleep and way underneath the bench.
So all of these, and I had to enlarge the holes in the skirt here because the heads on these screws are larger. VHB. <laughs> I think if you alternated the, the, the mounting holes, like do two of them diagonally into the frame and then two um, the, the opposite to mount the skirt to the extension, maybe that would work. Anders, thanks for becoming a member. How much in the, is the weight on four of the screws? I don't know. These don't have to be, none of this has to be strong. Magic marker hides stainless sins. Yes, and it hides um, scratches in, in anodizing too. In an anodizing pen. Look up makerspace version, no long screws. Oh yeah, I'm thinking about lowering the CG. <laughs> so these are kind of squared. Already some. Anodizing pen. Well, where's the where's the black one? There we go. There's the, there's your real anodizing pen, and then if you can get it to match, these will do. Okay. That's there now. <clears throat> Center goes in here, but I think we need a couple of T-nuts. I think this goes here with a couple of T-nuts to hold it to the bottom. Now you can use the laser to do cover-up tattoos instead of resulting to the anodizing pen. That's true. So speaking of, played around with the laser and it will mark the anodizing. I was playing around with the laser a little bit. And that probably a, a slower pass or multiple passes make that deeper. <sighs> Coming along nicely, I see. I was doing a homebrew conversion of my Ender 3 Max until I discovered the board that came with it fried itself somehow that makes the steppers stutter bad with layer shifts. Ouch. Okay. A couple of M3 by 8s. And line up the peanuts. There we go. Oh, those, that one's not lining up. Oh, I lost it. T-knot came loose in the socket. These these T-knots aren't great for a V-slot. Um, they fit a little loose, but I'm making them work. Laser will only burn the color off unless you invent. Absolutely, yes. So all we're doing is burning a coating off or in the case of um, stainless steel, heating up the metal to discolor it. 
it will it will make marks visible marks on stainless steel um, I'll show you in a little bit Okay, these are far from centered, so let me loosen all of these. There we go. What am I missing? Occupied with the build. Did I miss something? Scroll up a bit for a question from Dark Dog. Oh, uh, I made the skirts button head cap screw compatible, but would you suggest mounting? The extension with common M5 by 16 and the skirts with M3s and heat sets, I think that would be a good idea. And I think it would be strong enough and it'd be fine. I, I think it would be. And and you're covering you're covering the um the holes here. So you could put a, a different pattern, like a three-hole pattern or something for the um for the M3s and then the uh the M5s, just use the two for the M5s. Or you could do four for the M5s and then do like the opposite cross pattern for M3s and it'd be fine. I think that would work. Thanks for pointing that out, um, DJ Natty, that I missed that question. Okay, in order to get to the other screws that hold the the centerpiece in. I'd have to remove the power supply, but I don't think it's needed. This is all strong enough. So I'm going to leave those off for right now. Um, to edge stainless steel with a diode laser, just use an interface on the metal. You don't, I didn't need an interface. It may, it may work better with an interface. But I did that on the back of this flex sheet with the diode laser. Isn't that cool? Now, don't do this if you have PEI on the other side. Oops. And it's actually bubbled up. It's unusable. I'll have to take it off. It actually completely burned it. So... I'm going to put a new piece of PEI on this side and hope I can see that through it. Isn't that neat though? That was at 90% power on the five watt laser and like 50 millimeters per minute. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay. This is looking like a printer. Put the carriage on. No reason not to. Some M5 by eights on this little block. Ah, wrong. There we go. Yeah, that's a cool thing to do to your sheets when you replace the PEI. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oops. There we go. Maybe lower power with more passes would, would have caused less problems. Maybe. I think, I, I would imagine that you need a lot of heat though. To, to make that happen. I'll just make sure I do it on a sheet that doesn't have PEI already on it.
Okay, so the block is there. I don't really want to put the, I, I, I thought about putting the carriage on here, but I, I don't want to do that until I'm belting it, which is not too far from now, because I, I think I want to um, put that, put those on as part of belting it. Oh, tried to black Sharpie before lasering as, as an interface layer? Maybe. Let's put the, the X and Z drives on. Got a bed. that. I think that's the things. All of these and these. We have the CAD. Available as a reference see if they are doing so this is a m3 by 40 these are m5 by 16s and then I imagine these are 30 um how do i get to that let's get them that out of the way those are in three by thirties. Okay. So all the same types of fasteners as a regular switch wire. Where did you buy your Voron design team copy cup? This was sent to me by, um, by sanity and from the, um, Czech Slovak community. So not purchasable. At least not here. Um, okay, I'm gonna clean these up, just making sure there's no extra extrusion artifacts on the top surfaces. Make sure everything bolts together cleanly. Yep. Everyone wants one of those. Okay, so we have these and I have steppers. Now I have not cut the the flats in the stepper shafts. Um, that'll take a Dremel. I'm going to use a Dremel and I'll probably do it off camera, but we'll still assemble and I'll take the marks that are made by the set screws and I'll do it. I'll do a disassembly and do it between this stream and the next. So I need to pay attention to which side because I, I've, I've decided to use the Ender 3 steppers. So the extruder one is on Y and the... Um, the old Y and X are going to be X and Z, but they have different shaft lengths. So I need to make sure that I use the shorter one with the pulley that has the set screw closer to the stepper. So that would be this guy here. And this one's going to go over here. So we are going to grab these and we're going to grab some five by thirties and an M five by forties or M three by thirties and M three by forties. So 
This goes like that, and this will be this one. Is that these guys? Yep, those are the 30s. This guy goes in. Oh, oops. Ah. Okay, it goes in there. So let's spread that into one of these first. And then this goes like that. This goes like that. And then we put these 30s in here. This is this side, and I want the. I'm gonna make the wires go towards the towards the bed. I think it'll. I think I've got enough room. Let's let's loosen these a little bit. Make sure I'm not cross-threading anything. That's the only problem with the ES-15 is making sure I don't... And that one doesn't want to go in right, so what's going on? That one's cross-threading right away, so let's pull this all off. Let's see if it's the fastener or the stepper. I am dealing with stuff that came straight off of the off the ender, so I've got a boogered a boogered thread there. What is that? Does not want to go in straight. So let's see. I have. have an M3 tap right here. Let's see if I can clean that thread up. I'm just going to do this by hand to minimize the risk of that came went through. It is M3. The two that I had threaded in prior to this went right in. So I think I just have a very beginning of the threads booger. Okay, let's try this again. This is the one. I'm going to put this like this. And for control, I am going to use a regular driver here. Okay, that's still not going in right with my... That, that goes right in. So let me try a different, maybe it's the, maybe it's the fastener that I'm having trouble with. Put this one over here so I don't get it mixed up. Yeah, it sounds like it might've been the fastener. Okay. Feels like it might've been the fastener.
So I did all of that and I grabbed the wrong stepper. I did all of that and I grabbed the wrong stepper. I need the short one on this side. Let's see if that still goes in smooth. Yep. Okay. Hi, Charlie. Let me let Charlie out. Yes, go. Okay, so that, and then I need some set screws for the pulleys. Who are I'm missing. Take the Phillips screw out of the back of the motor and thread a long screw from the back and it will, re that's a good idea, but I, I didn't need it. I think the, the, the screw I happened to grab was just faulty. So it is going in the trash. Let's see. Okay. Um, set screws for the pulleys. They must be in here. Oh, there's one with set screws. These all have set screws already in them, so I'll grab one of these. And then I am not going to do anything. No Loctite, no nothing at first. We'll just barely put it on there and then I'll torque them down to make some marks. That's good enough for that for now. Just made switch wire, oh yeah. Sanity's switch wire deck panels. This one is going to go on this side. everything lines up just kind of slide the parts against each other okay there's a little bit of these don't slide in here well so i'm going to pull this apart is that the same way on this one yeah, I'm going to I'm going to file the sides of this little tensioner and the the surfaces on these down. So, I'm noticing something I need to pull this apart for. I think I'm going to instead of filing that tensioner down, I'm going to work on the the mounts. Let's pull these out and then this surface here, I'm having it's it's tight so i'm just going to file these down a little bit this is not taking much material at all off and then i'm going to make sure that there isn't any over extrusion plastic pushing up on these and then we'll try again hi brian the build is going well. The build is going well. Let's see if that improved it.
Which one is this? This is that one. Which means this is this one. There we go. Just gonna put two screws in here just for the test fit. Make sure everything lines up. And that's still not great. A little bit, if you're, if you're there, Dark Dog, I don't know if this is a problem on Switchwire. I don't remember it, but there needs to be just a little more um, space in between here. Because as that goes up, you see the you see the end splitting. It's there's just not enough space there. And that could be inherited from Switchwire, but I don't know. Oh. Let me just do a little more aggressive filing here. I don't know if I'll be able to get enough, but we'll. Same distance though. Like I said, it could very well be something inherited from switch wire. Could be, but if it's a filament, then the model on both could probably be um, adjusted a bit because that that width there, I don't think is that critical. It doesn't need to be that tight. So. And let's see if we can get a little bit Maybe between sanding all three pieces, we can get just enough there. Okay, back to this, this, this. Let's go one. And let me let Charlie in. Yep. Yeah. We'll say hi, Charlie. Oh, there we go. Much better. Just enough sanded off. There's a mod to make them bolt together on the bottom. Well, in this case, it would, would have probably made it really tough to adjust tension. Where is that? There we go. It's, it's better. It's not, it's not great, but we're going to go with it for now. <laughs> yes okay that one's good let's look at this one was not right so let's do the little bit of work on this one <laughs> it's 
desperate need of pets. Let's get all the hair everywhere. <laughs> A little bit of sanding on this. Charlie needs more attention, yes. One. <laughs> oh, and there they all go. Oh, <laughs> uh, we're at. You never have too much hair. Yes, yes, you, yes, you can. You actually can. <laughs> Did you grind those motor shafts for pulleys? How? I didn't. I didn't yet, because I was gonna mark where they needed to be ground. So I'll I'll get it installed today, and um. And I will take it apart and grind them off camera. Where he stands, I stand, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, <laughs> that hair flying everywhere. Okay, this. This and this. Let's go here. He is. Very needy. Are we there yet? We're working on it. Yeah, they're tight. I might make an adjustment and reprint those. But for now, we move on. They will work. Do those go on the bottom? Okay. Where's my other pulley, Charlie? Did you? Oh, there it is. <laughs> the benefit of my streams is you can you can leave for two hours for dinner and come back and it's still on. Yes. Okay, so the longer shaft here was so that. Hi, Charlie was so that we could actually clamp, have some shaft to, um, to, to hit with the pulley in this direction. So we are just going to barely touch it on there and then we'll line it up and then we'll torque it on there and that'll make a mark in the shaft and that'll tell me where to put a flat spot. Charlie is a good cat. Good cat who deserves all the scritches. <laughs> okay, so that's going over there. So we ready to belt this up? I think we might be. Scritches. All over. Charlie is a tolerant cat. 
he does not get angry at anything. Ugh. Okay, now you can go down. You have had all of the pets. All the fur. Holy. Okay. That was probably a mistake. That was probably a mistake. <laughs> all the hair. I don't know if that's showing up well, but. All the hair. <laughs> Oh, and it's all over my shirt. My Murph shirt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't breathe. Don't breathe too deeply. Uh, timing belt. Off the shelf spares is the theme of the build, so. Let's see if I've got good, good lengths of, I think those are probably two good lengths of belt. Put that down there in case I need it. Do you know if the Heart two-piece tool head PCB still works on the release stealth burner? It should. There, there is no reason why it wouldn't. <laughs> oh, let's belt this thing up. So before we do that, let's get a general, just loosely assembled um, XZ steppers. Let's go here and blow the hair out of the way. Now what? Okay, so those tension, it looks like they tension into the top slot. And that's what I wanted to see. So let's grab that. Grab some M5 peanuts. Two hundred and sixty degree cat hair going through the hot end. Yeah, that would smell wonderful. One, two, three, four of those. So I'm pretty sure we want to make sure that the the hole in these T nuts, the the sh the long side is to the outside, so we don't interfere with this um, tensioner here. So we want to put the the short side facing each other on this. You see that? I think you can see that. Similar to the same way with um, with um, switch wire. So I'm gonna thread this down a little bit and then this should go in there. There we go. That doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right. I feel like it doesn't have enough tensioning in that unless you just, I guess you just let it hang up. I don't think there's enough space here let's try i don't think there's enough space to get it to hit the bottom ones let's see yeah it, it tensions to the top slot there isn't enough you can't reach the bottom slot so 
It probably just means that you just have this hover a little more, and that's fine. Let's go there, and oops. There we go. That one. Oh, the fan would choke. Yeah. There we go. So now I want to pull this up a bit. That's as far as it'll go for the, the M5 tensioner. So I'm just going to snug that just a little bit and then pull this up to, to match. Right there. So that's the, the minimum tension point. And that's what I'm going to start all of this at. So we'll do the same thing on the other side. Maybe we do this further out and then slide everything in. That and push this in. And loosen these and slide the whole thing over. Put this snug. And then tighten the tensioner down. just going until it touches, which is about there. So now those are in place and now we can we can run our run our belts. So I'm very curious. You say you have things like a drawer full of stepper motors. If you wanted to just build another printer right now, would you have all the parts in your workshop? I think I could. I think I could build a printer from just things. All the way there. The cat hair. So I'm going to try a little different way than I usually do of belting a switch wire. I'm going to find these parts and realize I'm missing a couple of heat sets. and need my glasses to actually find. Oops, that. That. How many here have read all of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books? I don't know if I've read all of them, really. I couldn't tell you for sure, but I've read at least three parts to it. How many have read to the point where you can fly? Does anybody know how you fly? That's about the biggest thing I remember because it's been years since I read it. So these are the um, belt um, pieces, hold the belts in. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, I I don't think I would. I the posthumous. I don't know which that is or whatever. But there was a there was a a, a whatever you call it. All the books in one um, that I've read. But yeah, Colin and Brent uh, and Honored Twig. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to run one of these. I don't think I have enough. Yeah, I don't have enough belt here to run two. So let's just go ahead and grab, grab both. Scratch that. I'm going to run both. I think these are about the same length, so I don't think I have enough of either one to run both. Although this one might be close. Let's run this one and see if I have enough to do both. So I'm going to take the left side here and I am going to take an M3 by 12. I think that's what it is. Are those M3 by 12s or 16s? That guy right there. M3 by 16. Okay. 3 by 16. And I'm going to take the carriage here off the, off the printer and hold the, hold the belt in here. And grab a little bit of, a little bit of extra. And then bolt that to the parrot to the X rail and run this bolt or run this belt. And those must be twelves, okay. Yeah, the very thick book is what I read. All parts in one cover, yeah. Same here. Okay, so I'm gonna run one belt path. Looks like I'm gonna run the, the Z stepper, right? X, Z. Up here, up here, down here. Make sure I don't lose all these screws off the edge. Here, actually around the stepper. Yeah, and I definitely don't have enough of one of these to make both belt runs out of it. So that's fine. Well, I just wanted to see. That's one belt run. And I only have this much belt left, so it's not enough. That's okay. I'm going to cut this uh, somewhere around there, I think is fine. Yeah, that'll be fine. I'm not going to be able to use this extra for much. So I'm going to take that. And now I want the same length for the other one. So I'm going to pull this off again.
And then I want the same length belt off of this one. Let's cut a even. Okay, that's all I had left there. So now I'm going to take both of these and run them in this side of the carriage. Soldering iron still on. Make sure they stick out the same amount for each. And we'll grab enough to tuck to tuck out of the way. Same amount and tighten this side. Now we'll put this back on here to hold it in place. Now we'll take the, I don't think it really matters which one. Take this one, I guess. Loop the, loop the stepper there and through here. So that's just going to set there right now. Plenty of space here. And what I'm what I'm planning is the other 16. Is now that's the inside one. I'm going to grab these on this just off the printer because this is always kind of a pain to get to. It's, it's very tight in there. I want to try to see how well this works to give myself enough room to do all of this away from the carriage and then bolt things in and then pull, loosen and pull the belts to the, to the tension. So that can sit there. Now this one goes through here. Oh, <laughs> Douglas Adams form. Yes. I have a board with only four stepper drivers. Is there like an add on board I could use to add an extra Z or should I just buy an octopus? Um, well, Brian, if you're running clipper, you can run two of those boards or you can run a, or you can explore the world of can or what is there? One, two, three. Oh, there's only four drivers needed. There's only four drivers needed for this. If you're talking about this, you only need four drivers, right? Yeah, you only need four for this. So if you're doing this project, then you're good. If you're doing another printer that needs more drivers, then there are lots of options. Okay. So now with that one ran, we can run it in here. Both of these can, and I'm going to leave a lot of space here, a lot of extra room, but still make sure they're somewhat even. go. Put 
now this can go on there. So we're going to need You're not talking about a switch wire. So you can go, your cheapest option is probably to just buy an octopus or something. If you're not talking about a switch wire, your cheapest option is probably to buy a, a, uh, a controller that has the number of steppers you want. If you had like another four driver board, you can run two of them off of Clipper All those go there, and now we need to bolt this together. So we got a bunch of, of 40s and nuts, hex nuts. Push that in on that side, and thread it in from the side. Go. Nut down here. I could have put all these nuts in ahead of time if I'd remembered and thought about it. I do have another board. Does it have to be the same exact board? Nope, they do not have to be the same. They can be just about anything. As long as Clipper supports it, it will work. Okay, so I'm bolting the carriage together now. All the belts are still super loose. What is this, Brian? You want to detail function from Clipper? So I need another driver since currently. Okay, I see. Pi is not. Yeah. Hey, Zero G, G Design. So just making sure you're Dutch dude, right? How you doing? Okay, so the carriage is now bolted together. And now I can tension these belts. So let's do, what can I hold this whole thing up with? Sure. A box. <laughs> now I can loosen this enough to pull these through. Now we are closer to tensioned. And now let's go through and make sure everything is lining up, is all in the right spot. So that one was not, there we go. That one, that one is not, there we go. And then we want to line up, we're gonna adjust the pulleys here to where, and we're gonna sight down this pulley and make sure it lines up i mean this belt and make sure it lines up with the pulley behind it so we're going to adjust that to until that is true and i think i'm just going to set this right like that to, to hold it in place and that is not product placement um <laughs> not intentional product placement what did john say now Oh, <laughs> that's almost bannable. Okay, so now I am going to sight down this belt and we're gonna adjust the pulley position here 
until everything is in line. I'm going to use the glasses. Move the position of the pulley here. Get access to these. OK, now. Go out to about there. Yep. That and then we do the same on the other side. To line up. Loosen the pulley and out. There. And now those are lined up. Very loose. I don't know if I want to pull another tooth on the belt or if I want to see if there's enough tension here, uh, enough adjustment in the tensioners. I might want to pull one more tooth and then use the tensioners. So let's pull this out. Loosen the... Pull one more tooth. And make sure I've, and they they still line up. They're this. I'm I'm comparing the length of the belt coming out of here, and it's all the same. So everything is um, should be close. So I pulled one more tooth, and that was about perfect, I think. Oops. Tighten these down. Tighten the other side down. Do you know anything about, oh, Gadget Angel. You gotta get some of those stepper locking boards to play with. Yeah, that would be cool. I've gotta replace the, <laughs> so Max, I was, I was, I don't know if I was, I don't think it was on stream. I was um, testing this and this is actually the shorter, higher tension key back here. I gotta, I gotta swap it and I let go of it like that. Look at the market put. Look at the market put in the plastic. <laughs> Look at that mark. I've got a. <laughs> Don't play with these. They they can be, they can be dangerous. <laughs> so I got a new one. This is the um, the proper one. A little less tension than this one. This is the high tension one. I bought this back when Switchwire was in development. So I need to take that out and replace it with this, but this one, I, this is brand new out of the package. So we need to take the ring off and then I need a little screwdriver to take the, what do we do here? Is it? There's a, you got to get under here with a screwdriver. Need to, taking the belt clip off. There we go. Just just bend that up past the past the tab there, and then it will come off. So before I poke my eye out with this one, let's pull this one off. Keyback is not to be played with, not to be rifled with. Same location. Oh, get it out of the spot first. And then don't try to take this and take it around the pulley and bolt it to the spot here because crap like that happens. Instead, snap this, this snaps into this little mounting piece, bolt it here, and then loop it around the, the pulley up here. 
So what do we have here? I think they're 12s. Yeah. So when it much safer going this way. I think eights might even be correct here. But I think twelves will work. So now that end is secured, and now take your wire and take it across the top. Now it'll hold in place. How much crap did I get for letting loose of that like twice? We need those stepper locking PCBs. We should try those. I don't know if, are they, um, are they available yet? Let me get a better angle here. So this goes around the pulley or the, the little bearing stack up here. There's a groove in the middle of the bearing stack that the that the cord will ride in. Everything should be good. So we are belted. Now, what I usually do is I'll make sure I don't, it, it doesn't really matter as long as it's, um, things are lining up, but I'm actually going to move this top bearing over a little bit so that the cord coming out of this, um, from here is, is going to end up vertical. So I'm not going to do that under tension. So I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to move this over a bit. Maybe just a little bit more. What's the build volume for this conversion? I think officially 220 by 220 by, I think it's about 220 cubed, but I'm not 100% sure. I really wanna go a little bit more. I thought I was going too far. There we go. So the key back will snap at a certain height. You need to find the right position. <laughs> so we are good there. I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay. Belted and key backed. Now the two belts I'd left short over there can go tuck up into the middle here. And then these I'm gonna cut, I guess I'll cut these at about the same length as the other ones were. As long as they are the same. Like that. It appears for the purposes of alignment, it would line up with the Z bearing. And that's where I've got it lined up now. We got it lined up with the attachment point is where it should be, and which is basically the Z bearing. So now the cables are out of the way, go all the way down. And I guess can do the bed. Got the bed. I'm going to use these 
silicone bed mount spacers. They're, if you search for Ender 3 silicone bed mounts, this is what you'll find. You wanna make sure that they are all the same height because some of them have one that's shorter than another because of the little strain relief that the Ender 3s come with. So these with all the cat hair on them. Where does the chain mount? Chain mounts to a piece over here that I, I'm hoping I can get to when all this is together. I think I can get to all the things for the chain um, after the bed's on because I, just depending on where I put the, the bed position. So when it's forward, I can get to the mounts here. And when it's back, I can get to, or I can get to the mounts. Yeah, I can get to the mounts here, to the screws here. Project RCD, R3D has those stepper boards on back order. They call it a Z motor brake on their web store. Yeah, I talked to, I talked to the guy from um, Project R3D about it at Murph. Now these are gonna go, basically that's gonna make a tight turn back into the chain and that'll be okay. And then I don't know if I have enough wire to go through the chain. So let's see what we've got. Hmm, I've got, a, I've got a problem. No, I don't, no, I don't. I know what the problem is. Okay, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to put this down. It, it won't fit, but I realize it doesn't really have to. It goes underneath those. <laughs> I, was, I was worried there for a second. It goes underneath. It won't fit here, but it doesn't have to. Whew. I had to put the chain ends on first, then run everything. Trying to attach after the bed is on wouldn't work for me. We will try. Hey, see you, Evil. Thanks for being here. No, the, every, everything's fine. I, I was just, I was just having a little bit of a, a, a moment. Okay, I do want to do something here before I go further. I want to take the the sheathing off of this off of this wire. So I'm going to take this off of here. You can't see anything I'm doing. I'm just taking tape off the wire so I can take the expanded sleeving off so it's not running through the chains. I'm trying to do this without pulling on the wires too much. There we go. So I took this off of here and then all of this can come off down here. And this wire, it's a it's a silicone sheathing. I think it'll be fine. All we all we'll have is the thermistor and the bed wire through there. I am going to 
move this down so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna put a little piece of heat shrink here to hold the, just to keep the uh, thermistor wire running along the, the bed wires. So let me get a piece of that. So you, you don't want, you don't generally run that sheathing through a cable chain. Um, you will cause extra rubbing on the wire that you don't want. Let's try this. Can I get, can I get this through there? No. Next size up. No. Okay. Ends up starting to get too big. So I'm going to take these connectors off. I think it's only four wires there. I'm going to think it's going to be okay. I'm going to take this JST plug apart so I can get a... Um, the wire through. There we go. And then we'll grab probably a more same size. And run this through here. And all of this is wondering if the if the wire lengths are going to be long enough. But we will find out here in a bit. So then all I'm doing this for is to just make sure that the thermistor wire is going along the same path as the um, as the bed heater wires. Where are we at? Steve, I had to extend the wire bed underneath the deck. Original was enough to fit in. As long as it gets under the deck, I'm okay with just soldering to extend it. <laughs> Have you ordered planetary gearbox or motors for the same purpose? I don't know if we considered that. I think we did. Catch up. There's a ZN stop that will mount on the right side of the bed in the front. Oh, I'm not going to run a ZN stop on this. I'm running inductive. I can always add something later if I want to go with something like that. Nuno, I do the same thing. Stretch out the heat shrink with pliers to get it to go over something. Oh yeah, I do that all the time. Okay, so now put that on there. And talk toad, I rotated the wires 180 so you barely need a strain relief. I rotated the wires 180. Did you unsolder them from the board and resolder them? Now I need the bed, the bed bolts that are probably in this box, which is all the things that I took off. All the bits and pieces. Oh, there's one. There's two. There's three. One more. Oh, 
Need one more. Uh oh. I don't know where it is. See, it actually fits in the change if you stretch it. I left it. I don't think it's additional protection, though. I don't. I don't. I'm not sure on that. Gotta be in here. All the stuff, all the stuff went in here. Maybe it's on the, on the table somewhere. Well, we only need three points to, to hold a bed, right? I don't think it's in here. Okay. Well, if it's not in here. If it's not in here, it's got to be out here somewhere. Ah, there it is. It was in the other box. Cool. Got all four. I'll wash my hands after stream, I promise. There. There. And there. <laughs> And there. Okay, so there's those. And I'm just going to bolt these down. Some M4 nuts. What do I have here? Do I have some lock nuts? I like to use some lock nuts. And these are really long, but. Now, do I have a, well, I have, I have the next best thing to the actual um, size wrench. I have the Knipex. There we go. So the first iteration of this iconic is going to be um, is going to be inductive. I've got reasons, but I won't cover those reasons in this build series. I want to try something after. Those M4 bolts are freaking long. Happy, happy. Um, Dark Dog is going to publish that. He's expecting to publish it. Um, it he was saying next week. Just getting these. Just getting these um, threaded on first, and then um, later I will make sure that they're all the same. There's no problem with eliminating the manual regulation of the bed. What do we mean, the manual regulation of the bed?
<laughs> I need a break. One of those silicone columns is shorter. I think that one goes to the back where the wiring go out. No, I have a set that are all the same length on purpose. But you're right. And I did mention that when I was, um, when I was selecting them, I mentioned that the, um, a lot of those have one that's shorter because of the strain relief on the back of the, uh, on the back of the stock setup. Yeah, I didn't want to run the knobs. I just want to lock it into a into a spot and let the mesh take care of it from there. This the the ES15 does not have anywhere near enough torque to do this. There we go. Okay. You probably could use a spacer. Yep. So that's not the final height or setup on those. Um, okay. Cable chain. Cable chain. And an end. This guy. So on these cable chains, there's a floppy end. Well, on many of the generic ones, there's a floppy end and a rigid end. The, this side of the cable chain is, should be, ah, it goes on like that. So it forces the floppy end to be a rigid end because it gets bolted in right here and it can't bend back. So we want the rigid end on the bed side, the Y carriage side. What are your thoughts on the updated Switchwire clicky setup? I think it looks cool, but I haven't looked at it in detail. I looked at the repo, looked at how it's supposed to be set up. It's it's cool, uh, but I haven't tried it. I need to flip this around. We need to figure out how many links we're gonna need. So this is going to go something like this, like this. And I don't know if we're going to need full length. I think if we estimate this about here, this is going to go here. And that's going to go there. Probably want to break it right here. I think that's how long we need. Oh, what do 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 do? Does the bed have any, have any different strain relief than the different than the original Ender? Um, sort of. What'll happen is you can see here, there is a, um, a zip tie mount here. So the bed wires will just come over and zip tie there. They don't move between those two points. So then they'll get controlled uh, riding through the chain going to the back. And on this other part, there's also a zip tie uh, mount here. So you can properly run them in the middle of the chain. So think what I'm going to do now is attach this here and then run the wires or run the eh, let's attach it then run the wires sure hmm. 
Get some M3 by six flatheads. And I'm gonna need a driver without the ball end. So now we'll leave that straight right now. I'm just gonna use two. I'm just gonna use two. You don't need to, not necessary to use all three, I don't think. I think two is enough. And then we're gonna run these all down through the chain. Now the chain does split open, but this is such a short run. I'm wondering if we can run it, just run it through. Now that might be complicated by having these, the terminals on the end here. Just bend the chain around, following the wires. What do we got? Almost to the end. There we go. Those and now the these should be easier. There we go. Just barely long enough. So now these are gonna go there and we're gonna grab a zip tie. Wherever I put my zip ties. There they are. See you, Mr. K. Thank you for being here. Now, the way that's routed with them mounted to the board doesn't seem natural. I think if I was comfortable, and I am, but I wanted to do this without without that, um, I would probably desolder these from the bed and solder them going the other way. I have the, the right tools to do that. I have a large enough tip for my iron to do that well but I don't want to do that for this build because most people won't. I would not advise, if you're not comfortable with soldering, I would not advise trying to um, solder that, something with that large of a heat sink, basically. So this is gonna go up and in and pull through here and zip tied here. So now those are out of the way of everything. They're not gonna hit. They're not pulled on too much. And we've got that much on the, on the end, which is just barely enough to extend them. <laughs> so then see, that's in there. Zip tie it on this end and I'll zip tie it on the other end in a bit. Then flush cut the zip tie. <sighs> now 
on the other side of the cable chain can go on here. And this is going to mount right here, but it's going to do it after we bolt this onto the onto the frame. So I need a one of these. I know it's overkill by about a new bed from Roseworks for my conversion, hopefully a lot more level. The only concern with that is the weight on a bed flinger. There we go. And an M5 by 10, I'm assuming. I should use my uh, okay. this is going to come around and bolt to that, but I need to figure out what height to put that at. Where does this sit? Move that down a bit. So we want these to be level. Let's try about there. Okay. By the way, would it be a good idea to check the XZ motor coil resistance, see if the Creality motors are the same or in the same ballpark? Can imagine they have variants. I have no idea. That's a good. Good question. I can't really get to them easily right now. Let's see. I think we are right in line. I think we're good. And then this will just make it under the deck where I can extend those wires. So the next, of course I put the zip ties away. Why did I do that? About six millimeters from the deck. That looks about right. Oh, well, that's a problem. Okay. Um, and that's a problem that's probably solved by me lowering this a little bit more. I think it's a little high. So I catching on the bed screw here. And I may need to swap those out at that point. See you, Colin. I'm gonna move this down a couple of millimeters. He said about six millimeters from the deck. So let's actually go to that. Um, and because the cable chain, when it loops around, is hitting the um, is hitting the the bed screw. So let's see if we avoid that with this different after lowering this. Dremel screw adjustment, yes. Mm. Let's try something like that. Now, 
Eh. Now I avoid it. Just barely. <laughs> this is going to get compressed a little more too. I may still have to shorten it depending on how much I tighten this down. The M4s are too long. This is true. Right now it misses. I will probably shorten that or buy some new M4s or see if I have some. Do I have some? M4 flathead. I do not see any. I do not. It's okay. I can swap that. I can move that around. Right now it misses. That's what, that's really all we need is for it to miss. I think it would need to be probably at least 25 or 30 millimeters long to be uh, the proper length. Let's see. Yeah, I'd want at least, probably 30 would be perfect. A 30 millimeter would probably be perfect. Okay, I'm going to zip tie these. Start by running a zip tie through here. And then we're gonna get all of these tight and then loose, tight, loose, tight, right about there. Right in the middle of the travel. Okay. And then just enough room. To put these under the deck and extend them under there. Ditch the screws, use zip ties. Hold the bed down with zip ties, is that what you're saying? I have some more of this 16 gauge, same wire. It'll be fine. I don't know what's, what is, what is better to have someone extend the existing wires or try to solder to this bed. Has anybody tried to solder to these beds? <laughs> that's that's the question which what is better for a for a, your typical user to be able to extend those wires or to solder to this bed i know i can generate a solder joint at either side extending them or here that i'm comfortable with Extend with a with a non-solder style connector. Are Wagos 10 amp? Okay, that's looking good. Let's put let's put stealth burner on here. I've got lots of wiring to do with this, but actually. Put that on there. And soldering the bed was terrible with my old soldering iron. Yeah, you just have to right have to have the right equipment. I can do it very fine with this soldering iron, but I use I use one of these tips. Lots of heat into it quickly. Wagos are 20 amps. 
Maybe we, um, okay. I, if Wagos are 20 amps, what we'll do for this is, will we? Yeah, we'll mount a couple of Wagos under here and take these wires that are just barely long enough to do it and connect them in there. I've got, I've got some Wagos. We'll do that in the next stream. Two Wagos into there and then we'll extend the, um, the sensor, the thermistor wires. I mean, even if they're 16 amps, they're fine. Wago 221s. That's what I have, right? Yeah, these are 221s. I have a bunch of two pin. Just need two two pin Wagos. I'll print out a mount to to put bolt into the underside and we'll we'll do that. I think my build decisions need to be somewhat based on what most people are going to be able to do, which means avoiding desoldering from this bed and a, a, and a proper way to extend those wires is a good idea. It's printed on them how much, how much they can handle. Well, I need the glasses for that. Twenty amp. Yep. They say 20 amp. Okay. That is the plan. I gotta put heat sets in this little thing. Yeah. Do those wires survive chains though? I've got them running in the middle of the chain. I have them um, properly secured on each end. I think they will be okay. They are silicone insulated. They are high, uh, high strand count it looks like, looking at the, um, the ends of them that do happen to be um, soldered. So we'll strip back some of the insulation there. The bed is 220 or 240 volts. So yeah, about 10 amps. And they are real Wagos. Well, as real as I can assume. Okay. I need a couple of 25 millimeter button heads. Are these guys are these guys. Now this is always fun on a switch wire because trying to get the, this, this guy back in there. Let's see if I can use some. Oh, I know what I forgot. Uh-oh. You guys let me forget something. <laughs> you let me forget something. I forgot the X end stop. Forgot to put the X end stop here. And your owners are going to twist and tape. That sounds right. 
<sighs> okay, we have to take the X carriage apart. Because I forgot the X end stop. I don't want to do sensorless on X. I'm just going to do end stops on all. Hey, thanks for being here. PDP 2D. So I, I'm sorry, but I forget. I, I completely forget your name. So my apologies. I'm terrible with names. I need to, I need to, I need to say it a few times before I remember, but thank you for being here. You've put the end stop in it without taking it apart. Can I get a screwdriver in there? Oh, I probably can. Let's let's do this. Good call. Good call. Um I got a end stop. I need some wires. Twist and tape. It's 2022. I've <laughs> twist and tape. Where is my PTFE wire? Where did I put that? Oh. oh over here. Yes, 15 time. Oh, what color do I want? Probably just black. There's some black wire. Oh, what did I use that for? I don't know how long this needs to be. Probably about that long, and then I'll put an end on the... The only reason I you can do that is because I've done the same thing. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right. I think we're going to be able to sneak in there. Um, Derek, I think it can, but don't... Uh, that's another thing. Don't quote me on it. Um, I, I cut these a little short to my liking. I'm going to cut a couple new ones. Let's go. If I cut it that long, let's go this long. And I may be way long now, but I don't want to. You know what? I work in IT. And I work in IT support, so nothing is a definite. Everything is should work. That should work. It should. Not saying it will, it should. Maybe. I expect it to. More soldering, and I put most of my soldering stuff away. Is it still hot? Nope. No, it's warm. It's warm, not hot. How many times have you used, have you turned it off and on again phrase and it worked? Many, 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 many times.
<laughs> Never guarantee. Let's see if we can do this. Um, shoot. My camera position, you're gonna see it bounce around because it's just blocking that bottom drawer where I hold my, where I put my soldering stuff. Under promise, over deliver, absolutely. Tin the wires. Tin the switch. Realize you got a switch that's a little old. And probably needs a little deoxidizing. Because that solder was not sticking well. Let's see if that's enough. Much better. There we go. One, one done. I know this isn't a greatest view, but I'm just kind of bending the wires into general area that I want to go. There we go. Then I'm gonna bend these up and then twist, twist them just to, only to control them as they go through the carriage and stuff. <laughs> Welcome, Blazeby. Welcome to real time. Oops. Okay, so there is the wire. Let's see if we can get this into the right spot in the carriage and maybe Yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> there we go. Now I need to find my my correct screws. These will work. 
the M2 by 10 self tappers. And this driver. There we go. Success. Yay. Ticket subject. Oh, we started the IT, the IT talk. Okay, so now those are long enough to go up through there. And is the, did I leave the bracket for the sensor in there? Yes, it's in there. It's just kind of. Kind of in the weird spot. Okay. Then we take this guy. This guy. Oh, shoot. Uh, this is this is finicky. Okay, you stay right, you stay right there. Let's just get a, get this running. Woohoo. There we go. That's on. What am I missing in chat? I can't read chat with the wrong glasses on. But one of us had IT business at a nearly broken dam. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so that's probably going to be somewhere around there, I'm guessing. Height wise. Put those through there. Those stick out, that sticks out. And then clockwork two. Let's move this out of the way. Those in there, and that should go right like that. And then a couple of M3 by eights. Okay. Now those wires are there. That can go like that. And the tool head. That goes right there. 
but the um the sensor is not is not low enough so i need to lower the sensor a bit so it's not below the so let's pull that out that's a problem i wonder if there's enough room for a one of the little ptfe call it things on there did i get one did i get one with the with the hot end Yes. Let's find out. That little guy is what I'm thinking. Will this fit? Yes, there's enough room. Derek, $5. Could you speak a bit more to the problems with the Omron probes melting? Or were they knockoffs? So the question is, are we talking about which probes and and there are the pl08 and 05 style probes which are the red probes that i see melting and then there's the omron probes that are these orange probes i don't see these melting unless someone turns their hot end around so i think it's mostly the um the 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 pl08 the red probes that you're seeing melt and we don't recommend those on any of the printers now because they, they don't universally fit depending on which hot end you're using. Yeah, so the only time I've seen these have problems is if you reverse the, the hot end on like a dragon or something and it's basically pushing against the plastic. Um. The Raptor hot end came with a PTFE little call it thing that we need to use. So I just put that in and um, it came with it that we need to use and I just put it in and the PTFE is not pushing in. Um, there we go. Little extra force needed. There we go. <laughs> And I don't think oh, it's got a little call it clip. So we want to make sure that goes in there. Little call it clip. And now we're going to make sure it's all the way in. There we go. So that little setup. Otherwise, it was getting caught in here and coming out every time. But those red, yeah, the PL08 probes, I, I heard they changed color or material, right. The orange probes are, I've, I've never used one of the red probes. I've always used the orange probes and I've never had one melt. Okay, we need to lower this a, a few millimeters. I'm gonna lower that to about there and see how that seems to line up with the. Oh, a couple of millimeters up. Let's try that. Let's see, this is my straight edge here. Yeah, that'll work. So just making sure that the probe is a few millimeters above the tip of the nozzle. That should be good. We've got, I'm going to save all these connectors and stuff uh, for wiring. I think we're just going to do full mechanical assembly today. And then wiring and printing. So let's put a couple of screws in that just because it's going to look really cool when we're done.
Does your align with ridges at the bottom? I had to file those a little bit. Nope, it goes right in. It went, it sits right on top of them. At this point, this is gonna look pretty cool. Yeah, the older PL style probes, it depends on the hot end you're using. Some hot ends stick down just a little bit more and you can get away with it. But the general recommendation is to not use them. Oops, I need all of this. Oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's looking good. Yeah, and it gets all the way, all the way down there. Plenty of room. We took this. Sweet. You can't really, through all the fingerprints, you can't see the, the cool Voron logo. And then probably the reflection is keeping it away too. Where is it? <laughs> There it is. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. I like it. Okay. Next. Put the I'm going to need a lot of this stuff for wire length uh, things, so. Darker burning? Yeah. Okay, heat sets. Display housing. I do need to put a sticker over it. But if if you weren't here earlier, I laser etched the Voron logo and didn't realize it was gonna melt the PEI behind it. So this is actually raised up quite a bit. It's not just a mark underneath. So, oops. Oh, shoot. I heated up the iron and I forgot to switch it over to heat sets. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Put that right, non-melty spot. All fixed. Now I'll turn it back on. <laughs> Just sand the PEI a bit. Now 
Is there any place where I can get a bare spring steel bed? Yeah, there's a few places. Um, um, Wham Bam will sell bare spring steel. Um, uh, what is it? Build Tech. Build Tech will sell them. I don't know who else. There's, I'm sure there's others, but. I converted an old solder station. I just, another soldering thing is just gonna take up more space. It's very rare that I've, I, well, it's not rare that I do that, but it doesn't take that long to, to swap it out just like I just did. Okay, those two in. And then is there anything that goes on here? That goes like that. Okay. Subtle design, I hear, I think they announced that they're not going to be doing that for too much longer, right? Okay, so just a... Big Tree Tech's version of the of the display. Pull the knob off. Oh, good. We don't need to peel the screen yet. We can peel it when we're done. And then I think these are. I'm going to grab some button heads just because. Yeah. Button heads. Hey, KB3D. Still around or back. <laughs> Getting plated spring steel is near impossible right now. Oh, okay. go. Now, what size are these fasteners going to need to be? Oh, way too long. Are these just eights? Oh, maybe. Yeah, just eights. Okay, now are these, yeah, M3. go this way. I think these just go in here. And then more in three by eights. Yep, I think that'll work.
think I want to push that back against there. Let's see what that looks like. If only there was someone that sold a kit for the Ender to switch wire conversion. <laughs> Neat. That works. We'll do the peel when we turn it on, when it works. By the way, I can't remember why your one feet near the PSU is off. The one feet near the PSU. I don't know what we're talking about. When you get to the probe stuff, calibration, if you could, you probably will anyway, cover common probe issues. My switch wire doesn't probe so well. Tried grub screw, frame, square, belts. What, it, what? So it's hard to get into something in detail here on stream, but if you have a quick, what, are you seeing it in your bed mesh? Or are you seeing it where? And have you tried opening like a ticket on the Voron Discord? Because the folks there are, ridiculously good at helping with this kind of stuff. I don't mind quick stuff in stream. It's just really hard to follow um, in chat. CNC maker. This is Sparta 3D Sparkle Sky Blue. Oh, the, the feet are not in. Well, the front ones are at the front of the metal extrusion. They are not at the front of the whole setup. Does that screen case come with GitHub files? It it does. I suspect it's the same case as Switchwire, but a different mount. Oh crap. You're right, DJ Natty. I wonder why that is. I wonder why I did that. Does that help? Is that better? <laughs> Homing is almost always at a different height. Need to print with a raft and fix it in print. I'm not sure. Uh, on here, I'm not sure. There's plenty of things we could try. Try try a try a Discord ticket. I think you'll like it. I didn't notice it. I had not noticed it. I would have noticed it eventually. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Screens on. This has, and it's if Dark Dog's still here, maybe he can confirm this. But this has covers for the front of these. And I think I just VHB these into place, which is fine. It makes it nice and clean. But that's kind of a, a view of what it'll look like. It's looking really slick. I like that blue on the stealth burner. Yeah. Okay, so those can come off. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> See if I can get a... Charlie is very rarely on top of one of the printers, but he's decided to be on top of one of the printers. You know, it's funny. That's the, that's the printer he was on last time, and that's only the second time I've caught him on top of a printer. Double-sided tape, that's fine. What's the total cost of this one? This build, I think your main cost is gonna be in the rails. Plus whatever else you decide to not use from the ender. If you decide not to use the steppers, you're gonna do that. You need a, you probably want to use a different hot end. So whatever that cost is, and then cable chains. Um, let's turn this over 
and put the controller in place. You see those covers that have pegs friction fit into the holes for the screws. It's so tough to get something that reliably friction fits though. Okay, I am using an SKR Mini E3 V3 for this build and it did come with the duck. So we will put that right back here to watch over the build. Oh, you will need belts. You're right. Yeah. It does add up. Okay, so we're going to start here. That on there and some button head screws. You out of here, Derek. Thanks for being here. Why is that? Is that going in? Yeah, there we go. Um, please promise to laser the duck on stream at some point. Laser the duck? That sounds like it would smell bad. I hope I got one that's not bad, the controller. I hope so too. Or hit and miss. Well, I've got I've got other options if it if it ends up not working. Are the stock ender steppers good enough? We'll find out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi 02W on this build. So there's a little shelf that gets installed and I don't remember exactly, I think it goes right here. So exactly the one I just put in is where this is gonna go. I have a pile of those duckies on my, on the shelf behind me. So we're going here and here, so I can go one more here. He tends to replace them all. That's fine. And I'm not opposed to replacing these later. I just want to see how it'll go. So what size screw do I need for this? Probably this. And Charlie wants out. Okay, so that's that with a shelf. I'm, I'm kind of putting things in place. This will end up getting um, shifted around probably a few times. So this is more get everything in place. I wasn't planning on doing any wiring today. 
and just want to place things, kind of map it out, and then we'll probably call it here in, within the next half an hour or so. Probably want to put that like that. Someone sold their duckies for profit? Oh, with other stuff. How could you betray them like that? Your ABS panel is cut with an MPC and C. I just got a sheet of clear acrylic from a business Corona Shield. How do you recommend cutting a sheet of acrylic? I have no idea. Honestly. Um, I have cut acrylic with my MPC and C. And I ended up adjusting it on the fly for speeds and um, the RPM of the spindle. It's been so long, I don't remember what I did. So that is the high zero on top of the SKR board. And then I think this is just gonna mount right there like that. And then this fan here is gonna blow across this stuff well. So these are gonna be M5s. Let's get a couple of M5 T-nuts. You know what, I keep using these, I keep using these nice, um, Masumi and LDO extrusion compatible T-nuts. Let me grab some of the stuff that doesn't work so well. Let's try some of these and see if they work better in here. Oops, wrong ones. I need M5. bunch of other options and let's see if these hang out in here a little better no not really plug your usb in first i'm not going to plug usb in i'm not going to plug usb in at all There we go. I'm going to power it and I'm going to do UART. I'm going to do all that good stuff. Minimum wiring. What else do I have? And we're going to have to redo the AC wiring. Going here. I have to redo these three wires. they're not long enough. And then all of the controller wiring, most of it's going to come down here and go straight to the controller. Aren't those the expensive ones, Gadget Angel? Is that, um, is that these? I only have a few of those. <laughs> you can put them into Wagos. I think I'm just gonna do crimp new wires for these. 
I don't want to use... I'd rather avoid that. I'm already going to use Wagos for the bed. I'm just going to crimp new wires to go into here. So maybe we can... Do I have something here? Oh, I have a, a harness that's already almost the right length from a previous project. So it'll be, it will be already set up for the power supply side. So that'll be set up there. And then I just have to cut it to length to plug in there. Yeah, so we're gonna do this. So let's go ahead and plug this in on this side and see where we wanna go. <laughs> I'm gonna pull this heat shrink that I use to kind of control the wires off. Um, so would E3 Pro to switch wire conversion get a serial? Yes. A properly wire managed and decks and panels installed. And as long as the rest of it, it's, it's a switch wire, basically. It is eligible for a serial. So ground. Neutral. And hot or live. Okay, so we're going to take all of these, take them through here, and then we're going to bring them back to the side of the frame, and then into here. So that's about how long I want them. By the way, to keep your normal closing up the bottom of your vorons, what will you do with that here? That is a great question. Does the, does the build normally have a bottom panel? So I'm gonna cut these right about there. See you, Zarp. Does the build normally have a bottom panel? Dark Dog, does it have a bottom panel? Let's find out. No. Is there room for a bottom panel? Not really. We don't do a bottom panel on V0 either. So. No, I won't be doing a bottom panel. Because it's not in the design. Okay, where did I put? I have, I have, I have, I have some new pieces for this 
question is, where did I put them? Not there. Hmm. I have some terminal ends that I just got. The stock switch wire does have a bottom panel. So, Dark Dog, how would you add a bottom panel? If you have a good a good way, I'll duplicate what you suggest. Timing out here. See you, Bill. Thanks for being here. We're close to wrapping this up. I'd like to do the AC wiring now that I've started it, but... Could make side skirts. Wonder how long it will take someone to make those. Oh, little side skirts go along here and then on our bottom panel. That's not a bad idea. That would that would clean this up. That would clean up the side quite a bit. Where did I'm? Oh, maybe they're right here. Aha, I have the same style uh, crimped ends as, as what came off of here. Come on, it's just a rectangular area. They mentioned, I, I think that's a great idea. Someone mentioned, someone mentioned doing a, a short skirt to bolt along the bottom here. It'd be super short. And then that would take this place of these little feet and then the feet could bolt um, no, the feet would probably have to still go in those same spots, but a little short, like 15 millimeter tall skirt with maybe, maybe a line of hexes along there or something. And then the feet can go under that. It's just a rectangular area, may need a couple cutouts, but nothing too complex. Exactly, exactly. A couple cut cutouts for some, some visual interest. A fan for airflow. There is a fan. The fan's going to go right here. And then there's a fan blowing air through the power supply when it needs it. Okay, let us... It would please me. That absolutely would please me. I hadn't thought about it because I was building this as it is, but if, if Dark Dog's going to add a bottom panel anyway... A mini skirt, yes. Definitely want to keep the feet solid to the 4040. Yeah, it'll be as, as solid as these are, as these spacers that are on here. The feet move to the inner would make it sit a little, I mean, Visually, not seeing those stick out the side might be good. Would these zero side skirts fit? I think they're too tall. The, the, the basic idea would probably work, though. Okay. I need... Let's take one of these that I... Off. And let's... so it's this this size. Need three of these, and then the medium size of this. Okay, so the little clear insulator over that. And then a that 
And then that, I think. Get to use the, the larger side of my crimpers here. Okay. Another one of these. Add over that, and one more. Oh, crap. I forgot to put the, will this stretch over it? Will it stretch? Oh, it might. Um, I forgot to put the little clear thing over it ahead of time. I guess I'm going to have to cut that and redo it. It's not going to stretch over it. It'll be a little short. There we go. There we go. What am I missing? What did your 3D say? Even if it attached to the skirt, you want the feet? Yeah, for sure. Make spaces a part of the side skirt. Foot screws would go all the way to the 40-40. Yep, I think that'll work. Could go to amp feet instead. That's true, but this, I have these. Part of the, off, off of my shelf. Okay, so. Ground and insulator. And Hot. And insulator. Um, I need to see. I think I've got I'm I'm not confident on the wire colors on this that it came with. Um, yeah, that was neutral. That's what I thought. That that seemed off. Neutral. And live. Oh, geez. There we go. And life. There we go. There. <sighs> do, do, do electrical tape. What? What about electrical tape? I just Googled, looks like there were micro skirts in the 70s. Oh, I'm starting to lose my voice, I think. I think this is a good time. Was this the debut of the 
red LED flashlight. Oh no, I've used this. I'm sure I've used this before. These Coast, it's a rechargeable flashlight. It's really handy. Just a little pen light. I use it for inspecting prints. I wouldn't normally, I wouldn't have normally thought of grounding the frame. I don't know if it's required here. We're not using an AC bed. Um, what's proper? So that's gonna go around like that. And I'm gonna put a little tie here and a tie here probably. Hmm. So I think that is going to be it for the build today. We can keep talking as long as anybody wants to. Yeah, when in doubt, ground it out. I'm just curious, what is the, what is the, is it actually needed? I mean, we could do when in doubt a lot of things, but is it actually needed for this? This was good progress. This was, this was good. We got Stealth Burner and Clockwork 2 completely. Um, went through the full assembly. Got it on a printer. Two, there we are. It's looking like a printer. It's all belted up. Beds on. On some Ender 3s, it was beneficial because the motors, drivers, on the stock boards had problems if they weren't okay i know enders need grounding but i'm not sure what makes it need that enders don't get grounded by default they're not they there's nothing take that back it is grounded through the through the um through this screw isn't it through these screws i get uh, it is I get it now. But it's not a mains bed is is the is the thing. The gantry stays in place because of the key back. <laughs> Mega episode following a Saturday member stream. Oh, what have we been going? Five and a half hours? That's what we did last time, right? Does this conversion replace a bed? No, it's using the Ender, the same Ender 3 bed and, and Y carriage. Now, what kind of is a bummer here, you really need to pull the, pull the bed forward to put the sheet back on. I guess that's not a bummer. That's not a big deal. What is a bummer is I, I don't have a very strong magnet on this, so I might replace it before I give it to my friend. That is not holding on there very well. Um, will the afterburner get renamed to stealth? It'll get it'll get a new name. Yes. <laughs> to be clear, I want them to wear with oh yeah. Still talking about that. <clears throat> My hope is to finish this with part three. I don't know how much wiring I may do off camera um, in order to make that happen. I may get things prepped so it's not as much um, as much idle time or or busy time on on the next stream. But this is a nice little system. I like it. I like it a lot better than the Ender, like this, than as the Ender. OK, 
kind of LTT water bottle. Um, no, that's a, a, a Honey Badger Fabrico water bottle. He gave it to me at Murph. I just purchased another magnetic bed system for my Saturn II, like the Wham Bam. I'm fairly pleased with the Wham Bam stuff. I like the, um, I got some of the Graviflex or whatever. Um, it's what Subtle used to sell and you, and it's more common in Europe, but a few places here are getting it. Um, I like that stuff a lot for magnets. Planning on lasering anything else? All kinds of stuff. I just don't know what yet. Does this come as a kit? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware of. But this is, this moves smooth. I'm happy. What do we got? All the way up here and then. Let's see. If we were, that is about approximately where max Z would be. Let's see what. Do I have a ruler handy? Yeah. What kind of Z travel do we get on this? Looks like about 210. Next stream is a wiring stream. It is. Wiring and configuration and print. Wiring, configuration, and print. Cast aluminum bed for a switch wire. I don't, too much weight. Too much weight. Monkey Butler Labs, did a missing printer ever get found from Murph Fiasco? Yes, but we don't have it back yet. So we don't like to invoke Mr. Murphy. Graviflex is German, yeah. It's nice stuff though, and some places here, like I, I'm pretty sure it's a stuff that's subtle or very similar stuff. It smells the same. It has a unique smell. Yes, this is Core XZ. Uh, Freak, the... I don't know if... Let's see, is there... Do I, there. The GitHub might have some information on that. Who is missing? Yes, exactly. Murphy's Law. That's that's funny, DJ Natty. I kind of like the smell of the of the Graviflex. <laughs> Maybe this is just a Wisconsin child of me dreaming, but laser cutting cheese could be cool. It might smell good. Last month member stream in Fusion where you showed how you avoid losing selection of multiple chamfers, etc. I think I discovered another way. Oh, there's lots of ways to do stuff. The, yeah. The, if you play around with the select filters, I don't like to play around with those. I don't like to switch them back and forth. So I think we're going to call it. Next week is no stream. Next weekend is no stream. I won't be around. Um, so we will continue this the first weekend in August. I think that is the, the 7th. So the next stream will be August 7th. The plan is to finish this project on the 7th and then start the... Theoretically, starting the solid fork on the 14th. So. Um, yeah. This is cool. We haven't tensioned the belt yet. We will later. 
but and I need to get little I need to print a couple of things for this. So we'll get it we'll get it ready for the next stream. And that little bit extra time I'll probably be able to get like at least lengths of wires done, maybe a little bit of crimping. I'll make sure that we at least get a sampling of what is needed for running uh, for wiring this up, even if it's not covering every little detail. So <laughs> I need to get my death racer ready. I've got many of the components. I've got most of the components. Although mine will be slow because I've got the um, Pololu motors and those are too expensive to not use. <laughs> Hey, John, thanks for the $5. I appreciate that. Um, Earth next weekend. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. Thanks for those who donated. Those that became members, whether uh, becoming a member or getting a gift, um, those that gifted memberships. Um, thanks for being here. This is a fun build. I'm having a good time. Um, we will continue this two weeks from today. And then at some point in August, I'll figure out when I want to do a members only stream, but it'll be uh, probably later, the later part of August. We'll see. So um, it was an ender. It looks a lot better now though, doesn't it? Thanks again. I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye. And I will give a pet. Give Charlie all the pets. <laughs>